Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Nice South South Forum on Sustainability. The theme is the collapse of modern civilization and the future of humanity. Since 2011, the Global University for Sustainability has organized the South South Forum on Sustainability. We aim to bring together thinkers and actors predominantly from the South, but also from the North for a dialogue and exchange on two key areas of concern, alternative development and ecological sustainability, putting a focus on articulating and understanding experience on the ground, especially uh, autonomous self-managing local units and their interdependent network, networking and relations of mutuality. We recognize and value the large pool of existing efforts, resources, and convergency, and aim at adding to cross-border exchanges in the endeavor for the formation of new historical subjects for cultural and social change for another possible world. Today, we have a panel on understanding the consequence of war in affected territories, rural communities, and the survivals in Southeast Asia towards the uh, geosymbiotic uh, ecosophical revitalization for humanity. We are so grateful to Professor Takashi Shirotori's coordination work. I will introduce five speakers one by one before they do their presentations. We provide English, French, and Chinese simultaneous interpretation. You can find a group of interpretation at the bottom of your computer screen. We would like to thank today's interpreters, Maria G. Prasia and Wumit Hussein, Huang Xiaomei and Li Monghong. May I first introduce myself as the moderator for today's session. My name is Sitchoi Jadi Margaret. I am Associate Professor at the Rural Revitalization Strategy Research Institute, Southwest University. China. I am board member of Asian Regional Exchange for New Alternatives, which is based in Hong Kong, China. And I'm a founding member of Global University for Sustainability. I have been actively involved in the rural reconstruction movement in China for over two decades. On 5th of May of this year, we co-organized the People's Plan for 21st Century Forum Rural and Indigenous Community Building in Asia. Professor Takashi Shiratori drew our attention to the Asian Orange to the spread areas in central Vietnam. You can find the uh, video links of the recording in the chat room. I will type it later. Uh, then we invite Professor Takashi to organize a panel on this special issue in the Nai South South Forum. Uh, we hope we can have further discussion and reflection on the consequence of war. The first speaker is Mr. Uh, Yoichi uh, Nishimura. He is a citizen researcher in Japan. He was born in Awaji Island, Hoyoko, Japan in 1942. He retired from Shumoto Industrial High School in 2003. Since 2004, he has been volunteering at the uh, To Do Peace Village in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, while continuing to cover victims of defoliants and uh, dosins, He has published a book, uh, Defoliants in Vietnam, Chasing the uh, Diosin, and has a private investigator. He has record information and photographs of over 1,000 survivals of Asian orange across Vietnam. Mr. Yoishi's uh, presentation title is Tracing the uh, Dachshund Prayer to Vietnam. On behalf of Mr. Uh, Yoishi, uh, Professor Takashi prepares and presents his PowerPoint. I would like to remind you that due to some images, viewer discretion is advised. Please note that there may be uh, this comfort, this uh, comforting photos showing the impact of Agent Orange on infants and adults. 
they are shown to you to give you an idea of how the victims and their families suffer. Please minimize the PowerPoint screen if you prefer not to watch that. So uh, Professor Takashi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, today I would like to uh, present on behalf of uh, Mr. Yoichi Nishimura, uh, titled Chasing the Dioxins Prior to Vietnam. And the photo on the left is the sincere letter that he has sent me by inviting him to speak about his investigation. And uh, as uh, uh, explained, uh, viewer discretion is advised. Uh, all the photos here is uh, taken by Mr. Nishimura during the investigative years. And the uh, victims agreed to uh, have the photos taken to notify the world of the realities facing their lives. First of all, uh, Mr. Nishimura read a book, a cup. Apocalypse from the Fetus by Reiko Watanuki. And um, I'll use the first sentence. Uh, I was shocked to read about the Agent Orange. It was my first time to encounter about this with this book. And in the scientific conference on US chemical weapons in Vietnam, in Orsay University, France, December 1970, Vietnamese scientist, Dr. Tong Tak Tong presented the result of his investigative research on AO spraying by the US military in South Vietnam. The use of a large amount of continuous chemical weapons seems to cause not only visible human damage, but also chromosomal abnormalities inside cells. But these abnormalities can also occur in the cells of the next generation of people with congenital malformations. Mr. Nishimura was uh, stunned when he read about Agent Orange. And in the last quote by Dr. Tong, in the history of the hateful wars, did we ever have, but with one exception of the nuclear war, impose such an inhuman fate on those survived? So initial observations were about the store specimens of Dr. N. Tong. Since 2001, I frequently visit to Vietnam and I, uh, observed congenital malformed infant specimens created by uh, Dr. Fong. She is a Tudu hospital director in Ho Chi Minh City, South Vietnam. I was lucky enough to become a volunteer at Tudu Hospital since 2004 and meet the AO survivors in the Peace Village. Peace Village is a German NGO operated uh, uh, children's supporting facility. Uh, the children uh, who needs AIDS uh, raised um, and uh, supported for being affected by Agent Orange. And he was able to observe the children living here. And he realized that the Agent Orange survivors here have more rare and severe illness and symptoms compared to the other six peace villages in Vietnam. And she had, uh, Dr. Fong had been making specimens of infants who died of stillbirth postpartum due to illness or disability with rare or severe symptoms. Some of the uh, specimens were destroyed by the liberation forces. However, she was able to keep many of them. And Nishimura observed the specimens at Tudu Hospital. Seven specimens dated from 1973 to 1975 showed no upper body, lump of fresh undifferentiated form, head missing, brain missing, no scalp and epidermis and brain exposed, abdominal wall missing and intestines exposed, and seal limbosis. And 1980s specimens showed, most commonly seen were the double body, meaning the two bodies are connected into one. And there were four sets of specimens each for other specimens, including cyclopia, anencephaly, hydrocephalus, and hernia. And these are the actual photos. From the left, lower limbs only, so no upper body. In the middle, undifferentiated form, it just uh, seemed like a lump of brush. 
And on the right, uh, no arm and head. There are additional specimens in other hospitals in Tainin, Tianjiang, Tavin, Kanto, and Kama provinces. However, most often found specimens outside the Tsuyu hospitals were also of the connected double bodies. Hydrocephalus, malformation of head, cyclopia, trinocular, double body. Malformation of head, abdominal wall defect, no head. In addition, the photographs at Tudu Hospital and Tiny Provincial General Hospital show infants with head sized humps on the back of the head, chin, hips, and feet. Asymmetric double body. Now we go to the observations from my interviews. Ducks are said to be highly teratogenic and carcinogenic. There were quite a few people who developed cancer in the first generation due to dioxin. In this presentation, first generation means that this person has been exposed directly to Agent Orange. Second generation, third generation are their sons and daughters and third generations are their grandchildren. If damage is done only to somatic cells, the damage will be done only to the first generation survivors. But if the germ cells are damaged, a child with a genetic abnormality will be born. The phenomenon observed in Vietnam that seems different from other countries. In other countries, the same illness and disorder occur among the generations. However, in Vietnam, first generation victims often are seen with cancer and his first generation victims, his or her symptoms are overwhelmingly different from second and third generation. And usually second and third generation gets identical illness and disorders. And the most common for those second and third generation survivors, symptoms are cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy seem to be more common in battlefield countries. So it may not be all due to dioxins, but it is thought to be an indirect illness or disorder caused by a fierce war. During the Vietnam War, the US military dropped more than twice as many artillery bombs used in World War II into Vietnam. Many of the victims of cerebral palsy in Vietnam have extremely thin limbs, making them bedridden so they cannot get out of the bed. BABA, which is a Vietnam association helping the uh, Agent Orange victims, often recognizes second generation cerebral palsy children in areas where at least one of their parents has been sprayed with AO, Agent Orange. The next co most common symptoms are as shown here. These are all difficult symptoms for the AO victims to become independent. Such families are often poor because multiple siblings often have the same illness. During the interview, I often heard the following. Many children were born with diseases and disabilities that were not present when the war with France began. It became only apparent after the war with the US. Since the war with the US, many babies like lumps of flesh without hands, legs, hands, or human form have been born and died. All children born before going to war are healthy. Those with illness and disabilities are children born after returning from the war. These children are 100% dioxin victims. On the Chinese border and the Northern Islands, there are no people who have served on the battlefields of the South during the war. And if any, there are only a few 
So there are no people with severe illnesses. The number of cancer patients increased due to the war with the U.S. In many cases, there are multiple second and third generation children and families with victims. These families are often poor. There are quite a few cases where the father runs away and has another family. In some cases, parents run away and grandparents raise their grandchildren. I often heard that infants were left behind in front of hospitals, temples, boundaries, and facilities. And to do hospitals, uh, many of the children there are also abandoned children. Many of these are also the consequences of the war. In 2004, Vietnam Association for Victims of Agent Orange, Dioxin, was established and has played the following role serving out the victims, supporting the victims, putting the United States on trial. Out of approximately 4.8 million victims, MABA provides for 300,000 uh, 300, victims, monthly and regularly, provides homes, livestock, money, and gifts to other uh, 100,000 victims. These 600,000 people are only the first and second generation. So the third generation is not getting any support at the moment. In addition, it seems that it also provides treatment for victims' illnesses and support for surgery. Supporting third generation victims seems to be on the agenda, but has not happened yet. Apart from VAVA, some victims are paid by the Vietnamese government as disabled veterans and children. On the other hand, education for children with disabilities is not well developed in Vietnam. It remains extremely difficult for people with disabilities to become independent. Many people with disabilities are victims of the second and third generation. They are all born after the war. The second generation victims I know said to me, I'm ugly and unable to work because of defoliants. I'm a useless person who is fully under the care of my parents every day. America destroyed my life using Agent Orange. However, nowadays, public interests are low for Agent Orange. On the contrary, there are the bright hopes. Lu Min Chao, he's an AO survivor, independent painter from Tudu Hospital. There's a documentary film made about him, how he became a painter, painter struggling to be independent. Bo Tan Jiang, he's the first male university graduate from Tudu Peace Village. Tran Ming An, he's the first national university student from Tudu Peace Village. They are all AO survivors striving to become independent. And further, on the Ho Chi Minh City Dioxin Day Gather, use of Tudu Hospital gathers. They are the bright hopes. What Dr. Tong Tat Tong was worried about is still continuously going on. I hope that our world becomes a place in which the country that has used toxic weapons that can seriously damage the victims and destroy the lives of the children born even after the war will immediately support them to become self-reliant. The victims are innocent. I hope that the support will be realized while many first-generation victims are still alive. These are the publication by uh, Yoichi Nishimura. And I met him through a project when I was surveying about Agent Orange. He made a hand-printed publication for me, including all the information he gathered by his own feet. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you very much, Professor Takashi. And also, um, the um, Mr. Uh, Yoishi PowerPoint is very powerful. The images not only uh, let us to, um, to feel the suffering of the uh, victims and their families, but also to urge us to call for the uh, social justice. And um, OK, and then next, uh, we'll have the uh, second um, speakers. Um, Tran 
Juha is studying currently as a sophomore uh, student at the Faculty of Business Administration and Information of uh, Sashina uh, University in Japan. She is from uh, Yanbai uh, province in northern Vietnam, where it is one of the locations with highest poverty percentage in Vietnam. We hope to change the poverty situation in her home province. She sees education in Japan and the department to initiate new business opportunities for the citizens. Uh, her presentation title is Observation from a Vietnamese uh, Perspective, Challenges Facing the Rural Communities in Yanbai Province, Northern Vietnam. Um, yours if, uh, is yours. The floor is yours. First of all, let me now I'm an international student in Sinan University, and I'm studying Faculty of Business Administration and Information. And this is my honor to be here today to say with all of you about my observation from a Vietnamese uh, student challenges facing the rural community in in my province, uh, northern in Vietnam. And the purpose of this presentation is understanding the consequence, consequences of war and affect the terrorist uh, rural community and the survival in, so, in Southeast Asia, and especially in Vietnam, and toward the geosymbolic, uh, ecosophic, and revitalism for the humanity. And my presentation is divided to five parts. Uh, I will start with intro, introduction of Yinbai and the next is issue facing Yinbai. And then the light in dangerous consequence of war. And then is the quality of life of Asian oranges victim in Yinbai. And finally is uh, conclusion. And let me start with some general information on Inbai and about geography feature. As you see on the map, Inbai is in the northern of Vietnam and Inbai is a mountainous province in and consisting of one city and seven towns. And in Inbai, the Inbai is subtropical climate. It's hot and, and humid in summer and dry and cold in the winter. And in by it divided into uh, two major areas. It's the uh, highlands and lowlands. And the uh, agriculture is the major source of household in income for both of Asia. And in the highlands, it had um, Indian by has the highest Growth inclination in Vietnam, and in Yanbai is covered almost by land, forest, and mineral potential for the de development exists. Yes, but it is difficult to mobilize, um, mobilizing in social economic development, and in the lowland is quite different. Is um, mainly low the mountainous territory. Basin Valley and is a call for 32 of the nature area. And in the lowland is have the higher development, like uh, it has more markets and uh, supermarkets, infrastructure and have a uh, different type of life rules, uh, like livelihood, uh, beside, uh, beside agriculture. In the lowlands, we also have the job like a teacher, a policeman, and a officer. And I will show you some picture of Inbai. This is Inbai City, where I live. And this is the two picture is about the highland of Inbai. And Inbai famous for tea plantation and white races. And in in by population is about eight hundred and fifty people, 
And according to the survey in by has 30 ethnic group, including uh, three ethnic gr group with the uh, 10 people. And in by a small north province with 30 ethnic group and one majority group is the king and I'm uh, I'm king group and we are living together. And it means that your symbiotic and ecosophical community exists in Yenbai. And this picture is about a traditional custom shop selling for own ethnic majority in Yenbai. And this is Thai ethnic group special then. And this is Thai's group um, creative in design how like a steel how. And this is so special because it is an uh, ethnic people group festival. And I still remember that my father uh, CEO has took part in this festival. Uh, he joining the festival and done with the people from his job uh, consisting of different ethnic minority. And it is so different from Japan because now I'm in Japan and I have learned that in Japan, the in Japan ethnic majority group are discriminated by the majority Japanese. And in Vietnam, we live and say our culture among each other. And Ho Chi Minh beloved president told us on 54 tribes of Vietnam are one big family. All of Vietnamese people respect Ho Chi Minh beloved president. And if you go to Vietnam, you can see Ho Chi Minh president's picture is hung all over the uh, hung everywhere in Vietnam, like uh, on streets or in the class. And this is because we want to show the uh, our mm, respect to uh, Ho Chi Minh president. So uh, we are uh, hung, we hang the Ho Chi Minh president's picture everywhere. And this, uh, in this, this, in this sentence is as Ho Chi Minh thoughts. And we always believe and respect Ho Chi Minh thoughts. So it is one of the ways that we show our beloved. And I, I have show you all of you my beautiful invite, but invite have a lot of problem and let's explore what problem in invite with me. And the first of all is invite have poverty. Invite is one of the five poorest city in Vietnam with poverty percentage is 35%. Mu Gan Chai and Chạm Tau are the town of Invite in the highland. And they each have high percent, high uh, poverty percentage. Mukanchai being 75 percentage and Chapto E being 55 percentage. And uh, in, my op in my opinion, I think that it have a major three causes uh, leading to the poverty in 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 Inbai. The first is geographical problem and the second is socio-economic problem and the third is ethnic minority problem. And in Yenbai, Yenbai is a mountainous province with a strongly destructive mountain terrains and is often affected by the uh, natural disaster. So it is so difficult to develop. To develop. And every year in by has the flood and landslide. They uh, affect di directly to life security and livelihoods. And I still remember that when I was grade three in 2007, flood came and everywhere in our city is covered by water. And my textbook and notebook is stuck. And in order to have place to um, Sleep. My father had to. Um, my father had to put a four chair under the under the foot of bed to make the bed higher than water in my house. And after the flood, 
Vietnamese government gave, gave me and my sister a new school bag and rented the textbook for free to go to school. And the secondly is socioeconomic problem. And the socioeconomic infrastructure is not synchronized and uh, inconvenient change spot as you see in the picture. And this is un unpaced and rocky way. And it have a lot of slope in the highland in Vietnam. So it is so uh, dangerous and so difficult to move. And the system and policies for socioeconomic development is still lacking in synchronization. Investment resources are limited limited and cannot meet the like demand. And the final is the ethnic minority problem in Highlands because there are no school or only school that very far from home. And family do not have a capability to take their go to school. So they also do not have not they also do not have enough income to get the Sophicant nurse, mm, nursing diarrhea. So, it is resulting in low quality of human resources and the basic knowledge is uneven. And in and in in some way, prejudice view and old mindsets or customs still exist. For example, like um, people think that they don't need to go to school and they uh, have a child label and ch and child models. This is all about uh, in by problem. And, and this is in the win in the winter of 2010 with me and my uh, primary school teacher go to Mu Kang Chai Tao to volunteer. And I still remember how I was so dust. It is so it is so cold in the in the winter with uh night temperature and I had to go to the kids and the bus and scrub to go myself. But the children living in there have just got one thesis and have someone that don't have a plan to work. And they just eat the meal with the saw or star noodle. And I have asked the students there how to go to school a day. And she says that go to, uh, she go to school on foot. Uh, the how near the school is five kilometers and far from school is, um, is uh, 18 kilometers. And they go to the resident school. They go to school on Monday and leave a day and come back home on Saturday. And teachers not only teach them, but always take a role as a family. Also cook for them, clean for them, and supervise and supervise the students. And in order to support the ethnic and the family, the enrollment fee is free. And every month they receive the 15 kilogram of uh, rice and financial support of 44 of 40 national basic salary is about uh, 20, $26 um, per month. And um, and this is all about the issue the facing in by, and now I've been talk about the lie in dangerous consequences of war and explosion in Vietnam. In Vietnam War, American drop, US drop about the two hundred fifty four bomb into in by, but uh, until now, deep in the ground in in, in by, still had the bomb, and this this is the picture about this is the pictures about the USO founded in Yen in two thousand uh, two thousand 
21. The bomb weighed uh, 350 uh, 50 kilogram. And, and furthermore, not have uh, a lot of uh, incident in the past in Inbai. And in 2018, a family in Yellow Town encountered a bomb one metal lawn when they were leaving the rain plot behind their house. And because it, the site is so close to the residential area and the local material command had to move the bomb uh, to a far flung area for detonation. And they are so dangerous that effect directly into the people live in there. And although the government and so the found and removed the bomb safely, but no one know that in the cloud still had bomb on us. So although the the Vietnam War is over for 60 years, but the consequence of war is still exist, not only about the um, uh, an explore bomb, but also about the Asian oranges victim in Inbai. Um, Inbai is in the north of Vietnam, but um, it is seem never being separated uh, oran Asian oranges. But in Inbai, the area is in not affected by Asian oranges re related to dioxins in water or ground. But after the war, people from the center of Vietnam uh, migrated into Inbai. And so Inbai have, uh, have about 1,050 people are disabled or have the health problem in uh, suspected by the Asian oranges at the coast. And Every month they receive the subsidy is about the $65 from the Vietnam government. And Inbai has a special school for the Asian Orient and disabled students. They maybe uh, one year they go, uh, they go to primary school and secondary school about the try time and in the city to perform and have the money donation. And they sell the product, they make like a, a toothpick, cotton scrap, and they um, collect the money. But, eh, but by the way, a victim of the Asian orange are discriminated by the surrounding people. And because Vietnamese people think that if they if they got the marriage with a victim, they will not have happy life and their children will be disabled or have some health problems. So, um, so they don't want to marry the victim. And many parents still do not agree with their children to be the marriage with a victim. Uh, continuing the habitual segregation. And my mother's a teacher, but they always tell me that I don't marry the Asian orange. I don't know how to explain, but I think that she done wrong, but she want me, want my life is happy and better. And she told that to me, but is to have a lot of discrimination uh, in Vietnam about the victim of Asian oranges. And Indian by still a household has the five people who are affected by Asian oranges, but they request the they requested the government to receive the subsidy, but there has been no response as of today. And this is my, and now we come to the conclusions. Um, although Yen Bai has the development potential, 
but they have to uh, face with the, some problem. And the first is poverty. Um, and I think that in in order to uh, improvement in uh, agriculture and public transportation is so important. And the government should uh, do the nature disaster prevention and to enhance the quality of ethnic group life and about the unexplored bomb exactly i don't know how to uh reduce us but i just believe in government and soldier but and for the quality of life of victim or um, agent orange is i think that's government needs more support to uh, the victim because um 65 dollar per month is is so is i think that it is it is not enough to survive so i hope that the government take more support to them and this is on my opinion about understanding the consequences of of Goa in affect the rural community and especially in my city. And although the war is over, but I I hope that uh, Vietnam can be uh, can uh, have no more the victim of the war. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much uh, for uh, trying to hard uh, presentation. Uh, we can feel um, her uh, um, courageous uh, to um, to present the uh, problems in her hometown and also her love because uh, he she tried to do the research and also present to us and uh, she also uh, feels that she still have hope in her hometown and now uh, we have the uh, the third uh, speaker uh, Dr. Chapert uh, Sayara is architect urban planner and researcher from the Laos diaspora in France. She left Laos with her family at the age of eight after the establishment of the new regime, during which her father was imprisoned in the re-education uh, re um, education camp. Fearing the uh, authoritarian regime, she arrived with her family at the refugee camp in Thailand before settling in France. In exile, educator and trainer in Paris. She obtained her degree in architecture and uh, she uh, earned a doctorate. And um, often questioning her country of origin and the context of exile, she returned to Laos and worked there for 14 years in the framework of the French cooperation and as an architect. Her return to Laos was a return to her roots, both uh, professional uh, intellectual and emotional. The work and fields of research that she explored and deepened with confidence go beyond the framework of her profession and express her curiosity and her intellectual commitments. Her research fields are spatial uh, analysis, anthropology and spatial fabric, architecture, incorporation of knowledge, technique and wisdom, and also development. Her presentation title is the Lao uh, ecosophical uh, potential, vision, practices, uh, perspectives between nature, culture, strength, and threat. How do Lao societies and space, rural and urban, go through crisis, conflicts, wars, ecological concern, and political disasters? Please. Oh, merci. Uh, bonjour. Vous Good avez, morning. Uh, I thank you very much. Um, Donc, tout d'abord, je remercie le, I, les organisateurs. I thank the organizers. Euh, les membres invités à m'exprimer. Euh, Who have invited me to speak euh, here. Surtout en tant que témoin. But particularly Pardon. as a witness. Donc, euh, euh, avant d'entrer dans le vif du sujet, euh, je tiens à préciser que je n'ai fait Before je going into the subject. Question. Euh, de recherche dans le domaine de l'argent orange. I would like to say that I've been investigating um, orange agent. 
Donc, c'est plutôt d'abord le témoignage d'une personne née euh, durant It's la période en de la guerre. statements of a person who has been studying the war and the effects of the war. Ensuite, celui d'une personne appartenant à la diaspora and also somebody de France. Who belongs to the sporadic war. Et justement, cette in France, diaspora n'existe. And this diaspora exists because because there are there is investigation there is research les événements de 1975 after the events of 1975 donc euh, ma présence même en France et so my presence in France dans ce aussi plus tard dans ce forum c'est dû in this forum is because de la guerre is it owing to the war um, donc à ce jour, euh, la, ma recherche n'a aucun rapport avec. Euh, Today, my research has no, has no, bears no relation whatsoever to. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Ni, ni la pluie jaune, ni les bombes non explosées. Euh, mes travaux sur l'analyse spatiale. My work on a spatial analysis. Euh, est souvent confronté. Uh, is often dealing with this problem. Um, alors, ma, mes travaux uh, con, sont consacrés à la recherche sur My la work urbaine et de la dynamique on urban territory et de la dynamique spatiale and on spatial dynamics. Mm. Donc, je tente, dans, à travers les recherches, de comprendre la culture spatiale locale, donc celle du Laos. And I also work on the local spatial culture. Donc, comprendre euh, le traitement des sites et la place de la nature and et dans l'environnement, dans la construction de la ville et de l'habitat. And we deal with the environment of... Uh, um, euh, je reprends. Euh, donc mes, mes, mes travaux tentent de, de of, uh, des the building of cities. Euh, j'ai perdu mon. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> yes. Um, donc euh, mon travail c'est de d'essayer de, de comprendre le modèle de construction. My work is urbaine. trying to understand the construction model. Um, et à le travail, donc je, 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 je voudrais proposer de, de I would like to propose you study le concept de Mouin, de Mouin. Uh, the concept donc, of Mills? Mouin, Mouin c'est la traduction verbalement oh, Moulin, de la sorry. cité, de la ville. It's... Mais dans la culture Lao, euh, Lao Thai, la, no la notion et le concept de Mouin est très, très particulier. Ça n'existe que dans, dans cette culture, euh, donc Thaï. That de doesn't exist in this culture. Euh, donc, euh, la, la recherche spatiale, donc, euh, avec les Spatial de investigation a révélé des potentiels écosophiques singuliers qui est à la fois fragile et, et fort. It is both fragile and strong. Uh, fragile dans les contextes de guerre et de d'agression. Fragile in the context of the war. Et une force parce que jusqu'à maintenant cette and, uh, until uh, now this philosophy uh, a pu aider uh, ce has been able to help cette population à sortir et à population donc, à sortir du conflit a toujours existé. To come out of the conflicts. Um, malgré le fait que le Laos a reçu 3 In, millions de tonnes. Despite the fact that the Laos has received 3 million tons de tonnes de bombes. Of bombs. Ce qui équivale à which is the une tonne par population. Une tonne par population. One ton per population. Puisque la population du Laos à l'époque des années 60 Because the population de of Laos in the 60s was, I didn't catch the number, euh, était de 3 millions d'habitants. 
it was 3 million inhabitants. Et 3 millions de tonnes, ça fait une tonne. And 3 million tons is one ton per population. Alors mon mon intervention propose d'examiner trois choses. My presentation wants to examine three things. D'abord euh, euh, comment les conflits First of all, guerres, how conflicts wars euh, se sont spatialisés sur le territoire spatialized on the territory et comment le la société là et ce territoire and how the society in this territory a pu euh, comment dire encaisser je veux dire ou euh, survivre euh, à, à ces événements how they can survive these events et et la deuxième partie, donc, de the second de... part, euh, essaie de comprendre le fondement tries to understand de cette euh, vision écosophique de la the du base territoire. Of this vision. Euh, donc, à travers l'analyse de cet espace particulier. The analysis of this space. Donc, et en troisième partie, euh, the third part, euh, ce, serait conclude, plus, ce serait plutôt une conclusion, oui, et une discussion, une proposition de discussion. Will be a debate, a discussion euh, sur euh, trois choses. On three things. Euh, comment le, comment se réapproprier de. How to reappropriate. Euh, comment dire euh, du rapport entre le pouvoir et the, euh, la the relationship between between power and the sound quality is very bad I can't hear her et euh, comment retrouver la qualité euh, des, de, de la vision and fondateur to, euh, and how to find the quality of the vision of the founders et euh, euh, ça veut dire que, comment euh, aujourd'hui euh, considérer today, le territoire, l'espace pour mieux l'aménager, mieux la développer. How can we manage the spaces in order to be able to develop them better? Et comment faire en sorte que ce and how can we potentiel écosophique puisse euh, devenir une we, résilience pour ce How can we make this uh, Ecosophic potential become more resilient. Voilà. Non, mon introduction était un peu longue. That's uh, quite a long introduction. Uh, et je m'excuse aussi de ne pas avoir And des I, images parce que les interventions que je vais faire. I'm sorry that I don't have any images because the the ce que je vais faire, the presentation uh, that I'm going to do. Des images oui, et des cartes. Doesn't voilà. have images. Alors, le territoire du Laos est globalement constitué de the deux territory parties. territory is globally comprised of two parts. Les, les parties ou les villes qui sont euh, baignées dans les towns plaines alluvionnaires du Mekong. That are Et les parties wet. constituées dans les plaines d'alluvion du Mekong. C'est des plaines très riches. Which, et, which are on the low land, which are very rich. Um, où il y a des grands cours d'eau, tout ça. Et c'est là que vive la population Lao Thai. And it's there that the population lives. Et la construction du moulin. Et, et la deuxième partie du Laos. And the second part. Ce sont des reliefs. Des petits uh, établissements. Small settlements. Ce sont des hauts plateaux ou des hautes vallées. Highlands. Uplands. Et la population qui vit sont, sont majoritairement des minorités ethniques. And the majority of the population are ethnic minorities. Et cette bipartition territoriale. And this territorial bipartition et traditionnelle et ancienne. It's very old and traditional. 
et la culture territoriale euh, la territorial culture euh, prend en compte cette distinction et intègre dans sa philosophie this distinction into account et intègre cette situation dans, and, dans son idéologie ou sa philosophie and incorporates this situation in it its philosophy donc euh, les, les laotiens intègrent aussi l'idée d'une démographie they also faible. use the idea of a weak demography dans, dans l'ensemble du territoire in the whole of the territory c'est pour cela que l'intérieur des, des cités and that, des moulins, and that's why est très distendu the Le, inside is of the the whole city is very distended it's very spread out et euh, cadré par un, un, une nature euh, très, très framed lutte. by the Spanish uh, the English booth does not hear the last <laughs> the last part yeah alors euh, je disais que le, le, le les, la, construc la, la construction spatiale est saying that the spatial construction takes into account um, tous ces données géographiques all of this geographical data et sur cette idée euh, tout au long de l'histoire on this idea all the long history in laos euh, le, les pouvoirs euh, de domination euh, que ce soit la powers of domination which is euh, la l'occupation siamoise puis la colonisation the française occupation and then the french colonization euh, ils ont tenté par rapport à leur politique de corriger les they are attempted to correct de, de corriger ces pour eux, c'est une contrainte et que pour les Laos, ce n'était pas. Ce n'était pas. What they regard as a constraint. Um, la, 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 le, le, le Siam, par exemple, a essayé de the déplacer Siam la population. Try to displace the population. Et, et au, au milieu du, au début du 20e siècle, a réussi à amputer une of partie the 20th de la century. Haute a réussi à amputer euh, une partie du, du Laos en faveur euh, du Siam. In favor of Siam. Et euh, donc une grande partie de large est, part ouest du Mekong of the West. Euh, manquait à, au territoire laotien aujourd'hui. Was, was absent in the territory there. Quant à la France, elle a essayé de As regards France, she tried to construire une infrastructure, build an infrastructure, euh, des équipements nombreuses pour corriger le materials, equipments for correcting the isolation de, 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 de ce pays. Mais c'est surtout pour relier à l'ensemble de l'industrie française. C'est surtout pour relier it's, au centre euh, it's, euh, à l'ensemble du territoire to, chinoise. C'est pour essayer de relier tout le territoire chinois. Euh, donc le centre, le centre est au Vietnam. Donc so le the centre est au Vietnam. Euh, du coup, euh, les années 60 ont hérité de ce dislocation so territoriale. Inherit or inherited this uh, this dislocation, this territorial dislocation. Uh, donc, les sociétés ethniques qui étaient traditionnellement ethnic societies which were traditionally uh, très attachées aux moulins, aux villes, very taille, attached to this town. Nous verrons dans la deuxième partie uh, le, les, les caractéristiques des moulins. We can see in the second part the characteristics of Manan. Uh, pourquoi les the features of Manan? 
Et pourquoi le rôle des minorités ethniques était... Why the role? Why was the role of ethnic minorities? Était, enfin, garantissait la richesse et le bon fonctionnement de la société. The wealth and the good functioning of the society. Malgré le fait que euh, les Despite the fact that the, they didn't, they weren't liked there. Malgré le fait que les, les, les cités laotiennes sont monoethniques. Despite the fact that the, the city was monoethnic. Yes. Mais euh, l'importance des ethnies dans la culture urbaine the au Laos. Importance of ethnicities in urban cultures. Um, is significant. C'est son sa capacité à, à is their capacity à, à gérer et to à échanger manage and exchange avec ces minorités ethniques qui vivent à l'extérieur with these ethnic minorities qui qui vivent eux à l'extérieur du bain de la cité that live outside the city et euh, eux ils apportent des produits de la forêt que les And they bring products from the forests that the people from Munan need and want. Et euh, les, les autorités royales anciennes exportaient les old produits. royal authorities exported. Euh, ce qui fait euh, la richesse de, de ce petit royaume. Exported these aucun, products, aucun. which is what created the wealth of these small uh, kingdoms. Alors, la... donc le, le Laos des années 60 était coupé. Le Sixties Laos was cut off de cette richesse et de from this wealth de la maîtrise du territoire euh, traditionnel and from being able to govern the traditional territory. Um, alors, les hostilités euh, the hostilities de la guerre euh, froide, de, non, de la Cold guerre War, euh, vient pla se plaquer euh, sur une situation déjà fragile. Uh, they are placed on a situation which is already fragile. Mm -hmm. um, les, euh, les villes ou les petites villes de montagne, donc des minorités ethniques, so the, the, my ethnic minorities in the mountains, se sentent comme abandonnées par l'autorité centrale. Uh, like as though they are abandoned by the central authorities. Et lorsque le pouvoir est passé euh, au, au gouvernement local, le pays qui est When censé être... Power went to local government. Euh, le pays n'est pas encore bien géré. The country was still not well managed by local government. Que déjà les forces euh, yet, communistes, euh, the communist forces de libération, say that euh, liberators, qui a son centre donc au Vietnam, c'est that were in Vietnam, c'est euh, investi les territoires qui étaient euh, qui se invaded. sentaient abandonnés. The territories that felt abandoned. Um, donc, uh, j'essaie d'aller plus vite. I'm trying to catch up. Um, donc, uh, les, les, les conflits idéologiques. So, ideological conflicts. Euh, de géopolitique locale et internationale vont euh, Local, exercer des, euh, vont créer des situations euh, nouvelles We et, new et, avec des résidus du passé with the remains of the past euh, rappelons que à la fin de la décolonisation Let's remind that at the end of decolonization, euh, le Vietnam est séparé en deux. Vietnam was separated in two. Le Vietnam Nord et Vietnam Sud. Northern part and southern part. C'est là où se trouve le drame des Laotiens. And this is where 
the issue lies. Parce que uh, le Vietnam Nord cherchera à attaquer le Vietnam Sud. Because the northern part will try to attack the southern part with military power. Et, uh, parce que le ce qui intéressait le, le gouvernement du Vietnam Because à l'époque, interested pas the government at the time was not just the independence. Mais la propagation idéologique dans toute la péninsule indochinoise. But the spreading of the ideology in the whole peninsula. Donc le, le Vietnam Nord poursuit sa conquête idéologique. So the northern Vietnam will continue this ideological conquest. Et ils vont donc euh, chercher à aller dans le sud en empruntant le territoire laotien dont le pays so de Minh. So they will try to get to the southern part, going through the Ho Chi Minh territory. Et le piste de Ho Chi Minh est dans le territoire laotien. And Ho Chi Minh is within Laotian territory. Et donc, lorsque les Américains interviennent, so when the Americans intervene, pour bloquer les forces communistes dans les trois pays et en Thaïlande aussi, to block the communist forces in the three countries and in Thailand too. Et le, la peur du péril rouge, comme on dit. It was what we call the red fear. Uh, ils trouvent des raisons d'intervenir aussi au Laos et de lâcher les bombes sur les pistes de Ho Chi Minh. So they et... eventually find out reasons to attack uh, this part and to uh, drop bombs also in Ho Chi Minh territories. Et... Le Laos donc, a, a reçu les, les, les bombes antipersonnelles, les bombes non explosées, ce qu'on appelle les bombies aujourd'hui. And Laos attacked with uh, what we call bomb E today. It's uh, all, napalm. The, all the uh, antipersonnel bombs, napalm. Euh, donc les bombies non explosées. So aussi. unexploded bombs too. Um, et bien entendu, ce sont des villes qui se situent dans les montagnes, dans les hauts plateaux. And of course, these places, these cities are located in the highlands, mountains. Et les rizières qui sont dans les, dans les hautes vallées, comme à Mwansing, comme à Sien Kwan. And as euh, culture, like on Sien Kwan. Euh, qui, 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 qui reçoivent et qui portent encore des blessures de ces, de, de, de ces armes still suffer today from the, these uh, attacks. Et puisque les enfants essayent de récupérer les métaux pour, pour, les, pour les vendre, pour les recycler. And today the children are using this uh, metal scrap to sell it, to use it. Je voudrais revenir sur, sur l'idée de, de pendant la situation de, des, années, des années 60. I would like to come back on the 60s situation. Le, le, les conséquences sociales et économiques dans la population. Dans Social le pays. economic consequences among the population. Euh, alors que dans les autres pays pauvres, il y a une dualité forte entre le urbain et le rural. In the other uh, poor countries, there's a strong difference between the rural and urban uh, situation. So the population leaves countryside to go find jobs in cities. Mais la situation, la situation du Laos est particulière. But in Laos, the situation is very particular. Um, Étant donné que 80% de la population, c'est une population euh, paysanne. Since 80% of the population is a rural uh, population. Euh, ils quittent les, leur terre, non pas parce qu'ils vont trouver du travail en ville, mais ils quittent leur terre parce que leur terre était devenue incultivable. Et they, are living, de, they are leaving the countryside, not because they are looking for a job, but because they cannot work anymore in the countryside because the lands were continued contaminated because of bombs. Mm. Et des conflits euh, armés. De And also due to uh, conflict, armed conflict. Et il euh, y a de nombreux réfugiés pourtant qui sont arrivés en ville. 
lot of refugees arrived in town. Et la situation urbaine euh, laotienne dans les années 60 est, est mm. désastreuse. And the situation in the 60s in the Laos cities was a disaster. Parce que là, comme on avait vu tout à l'heure, que les villes, les moulins, Be sont des because cités. Because, as we saw earlier, these cities. Résidentielles. Are resi residential cities. And um, avec une, um, un encadrement uh, naturel. Il y a des petites rizières, il y a de la forêt. Uh, with a natural de surrounding, de with uh, rice fields, mountains. Um, uh, uh, la réception uh, d'une forte population qui cherche du travail, qui n'ont pas de, 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 de résidents, qui n'ont pas d'habitation, est un, un, un problème difficile. So it was very difficult for the cities to uh, welcome this huge flow of population coming from the countryside. Um, à la sortie de la colonisation, d'une petite ville de du petit bourg, de petite ville uh, simple, uh, en 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 dix ans, le 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 Vientiane, par exemple, est passé d'une du petite ville à une grosse ville. So at the end of the decolonization, small towns, for example, really doubled their population and came from small cities to big ones. Avec des problèmes qui n'étaient pas uh, de son ressort, qui n'étaient pas capables forcément de le régler. And they were facing new challenges they couldn't tackle. Um, Um, mais uh, heureusement que durant cette période, là encore, la philosophie, la, la pensée écosophique est, a sauvé certains côtés. Fortunately, in, the, in this period, the ecosophic philosophy saved a part of the population. Je prends l'exemple de la loi coutumière sur le foncier. For example, the common law on real estate. Uh, le droit à la terre, le, la, la, right la, la répartition des, 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 des richesses en termes de sharing de, de, de of wealth for um, agriculture. Le, le Laos des années 60 uh, utilise encore la loi coutumière. In the 60s, Laos still used this uh, law, this common law, qui permet à la population uh, désemparée de la, par la guerre. It allowed these uh, poor populations due to war de, de, de venir défricher les terres autour des grandes villes. To have access to the land around these big cities and to exploit it. Uh, parce que cette population-là ne peut pas trouver du travail dans les petites usines, dans les factories. Because this type of population cannot find work in, for example, uh, factories, uh, this kind of job. Ce, nous, ce ne sont pas des, des travailleurs employés d'usine, ce ne sont pas des ouvriers, ce sont des agriculteurs qui possèdent workers, they own, the, they own land. Voilà. Donc, il euh, y, y a comme ça euh, une, un déplacement de situation, euh, so we have a shift of une situation. dislocation de la place des uns des autres. Dans cette a place. dislocation of uh, every people situation. Et ce qui, donc, si je peux conclure sur l'aspect la, euh, bipartite. Et to conclude on the uh, bipartite aspect. Euh, les éléments qui étaient une qualité, euh, la the diversité géographique. An, an advantage, for example, geographical diversity. Devient dans les années 60 à cause de la guerre. Became in the 60s because of war. Euh, des... Des, des nouveaux éléments uh, problématiques. New problematic elements. Donc, euh, on voit que dans le, dans le centre-ville, il y a des... Euh, so in the city centers, il y a des, des quartiers euh, insalubres, il y a des, des quartiers mal famés qui... You could observe aimaient, very dangerous donc, neighborhood. Euh, born in this uh, era. Et ce quartier a été éradiqué il y a à peine une quinzaine d'années. 
And this neighborhood was eliminated only 15 years ago. C'est le quartier de Nantian, c'est une zone humide. It's a Nantian neighborhood, a humid area. Hmm. Et euh, euh, ce, ce, comment dire? Le... Bon, je vais m'arrêter sur cette question. Et sinon, là... La... I'll stop on these questions. On pourrait parler de, de retombées, des retombées, euh, vraiment la, la, la distribution des retombées de, des conflits. We could talk about the consequences and the share of this conflict. Beaucoup d'éléments. We could continue on a lot of elements, actually. Je sais pas, je crois que j'ai encore cinq minutes, non? I think I still have five minutes. Go ahead. Ali, Ali. Alors, je voudrais juste revenir sur euh, la qualité. On a beaucoup I would parlé just de like ça. to come back on quality. So we talked about a lot about quality. Donc, ce fameux écosoph... euh, pensée écosophique. So this thought of ecosophism. Euh, donc, euh, mes, mes investigations, euh, mes enquêtes de terrain. Euh, My field investigation Laos, in Laos. Me, me fait découvrir la. Euh, des considérations vis-à-vis euh, -vis de la nature. Euh, Made me re realize some consideration toward nature. Par rapport à euh, comment dire la la qualité des sites, la manière de s'insérer. Euh, Regarding the quality of the sites. And the way to find your place to manage et, your place in the nature. Et je pense qu'il y a des, euh, encore euh, beaucoup d'éléments qui peuvent nous aider et nous, app nous apprendre de la nature. Et je pense qu'il y a encore beaucoup d'éléments qui peuvent nous aider à comprendre et à apprendre de la nature. Alors, qu'est-ce que c'est un muin On a parlé tout à l'heure. So, I talked about muin. What is it? Un ville, cité muin. 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 It's a city. Um, c'est à un statut particulier. It has a specific stature. C'est à la fois un espace politique. It's a political space. C'est un espace sociétal. A society space. C'est un lieu euh, où on a besoin d'interroger le sacré pour pouvoir l'installer. A place where we have to question the holy aspect. Et au sens simple, euh, un moulin est une cité c'est un simply put pays. it's a, a city a town ça veut dire aussi pays it also means country mm. oh là. comment je peux expliquer j'ai pas d'image how could i explain i don't have pictures actually um, on, on, on va dire que uh, Amran a une um, let's say that Amran est un est un micro un monde qui intègre is a small word integrating une certaine cosmogonie a cosmogonia elle intègre euh, euh, même à l'échelle de l'habitat even at the scale of the livelihood in the land euh, la dimension euh, euh, sacrée mais aussi the euh, holy euh, dimension l'eau le vent enfin, but also with water air wind la, les plantes. Also plants. Parce que les lars croient que dans chaque chose, il y a une âme. Because they believe that there is a soul in everything. Et euh, lorsqu'un lars installe un moulin, il interroge euh, les esprits qui sont là d'abord. So when they implement a moulin, they ask for the permission to the spirits. Et... Euh, euh, mis à part l'aspect la, formel. Uh, besides the formal aspect. Parce que l'aspect la, formel des vignes laotiennes, euh, tous sont quasiment organiques. Sauf Because quelques villes, une seule ville du nord. Euh, all cities are organic, actually, in this uh, mindset. Et euh, la seule ville qui était quadrillée, comme un mandala. The only one that was structured, la Sandala. 
comme, comme un mandala, euh, c'est la ville de Mansin, la ville lue dans le nord de Laos. It's a city of Mansin in the northern part of Laos. Le reste des villes sont organiques et euh, All the others Mansin. are organic and settled in a cycle. Euh, s'insère dans un site sans jamais apporter des modifications à l'existant. Without never changing anything in what is living. Les, les villas vont euh, s'adapter et non pas modifier le, le cours. These cities will adapt and not change the, the events. Mm -hmm. euh, je prends un exemple sur la, la Let's take an example de on the water management. La, la gestion de l'eau euh, dans la pour la ville de, dans la plaine de Vientiane, dans la capitale. In the um, Chanchan Plain. Euh, des, un, un tout petit ouvrage euh, en bois. It's a very small structure in wood. Euh, peut gérer un très 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 grand territoire. And it can manage a very big territory. Juste en sachant euh, gérer euh, l'amplitude la, entre l'eau qui vient de la montagne et l'eau qui remonte qui, qui vient du Mekong. Just ah. by managing the flow, the water flow coming upstream and downstream from the Mekong Valley. Mm -hmm. Et euh, 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 de, de telle sorte que jamais euh, l'eau n'inonde la plaine rizicole. This way, there is never any fluid on the rice fields. Et on est étonné de voir la, la taille. Euh, And we are really images. surprised to see the size of this work. Euh, par rapport à l'immensité du, du, du territoire. Regarding the immensity of the territory. Euh, tout cela parce que les anciens, ils savent gérer euh, les saisons. Oh, because the old people, or the uh, traditional people, know how to manage this. L'eau qui vient de la montagne ne n'est pas venue en même temps. Euh, pas venu en même temps. Euh, ils ont un mois ou deux mois d'écalage avec le Mekong. It's not managed at the same time. There's like a month or two months. Et le, les petits barrages en In bois. Between. And the small reservoirs, the small wooden dikes, avec, uh, des rétentions, des petites rétentions managed et, uh, with small water retentions. Et ils peuvent répartir de l'eau. Uh, And they can share the water, distribute the water. À la saison sèche, par exemple. For example, during the dry season. Donc, la, 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 la grande qualité de la, de la manière de, de gérer, euh, enfin, la grande qualité écosophique des moulins de Lao et, se trouve aussi dans la, dans la personnalité des. The des way of managing the water is also in the mentality of the traditional chiefs. Euh, les, 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 les monarques et la population viennent du même, de la même souche. The, the monarchs and the population come from the same the, the, the same uh, the same uh, uh, social yes. um, et social ce sont, strata. Ce sont des euh, des, euh, des personnes qui ont pris le pouvoir par la connaissance, euh, par la connaissance euh, empirique. The same descent, the same origin. Le connaissant empirique. They have the et, same empiric knowledge. Et une connaissance divinatoire. And uh, the ability to, to divine. Mais... Euh, le, 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 comment dire, la personnalité euh, des chefs de là n'est pas so the personality des, of the chiefs is not euh, des devatra comme euh, dans les grands empires khmer ou des maharaja comme des grands euh, like the personality of the chiefs in big empires 
ce sont des chefs qui dirigent les petits groupes. The chiefs, which, uh, which lead small groups. Euh, qui, euh, qui puisent leur, leur puissance vraiment dans l'expérience et la connaissance divinatoire de la nature. Et euh, est-ce que je suis... <rire> Allô Hello. Donc, non, je vais, je vais arrêter mon, ma, 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 ma deuxième partie. En, I'm going en... to stop my second part. Euh, et de rentrer dans la partie conclusive. And I'm going to go into my concluding section. Sur euh, le besoin de la revitalisation rurale. Euh, et des structures euh, qui sont qui ont été euh, um. euh, comment dire qui ont été menacées ou fragilisées par la guerre. So, right, I want to talk about the sectors that have been threatened or rendered fragile by the war. Parce que jusqu'à maintenant nous avons parlé. Because up to now we have spoken we haven't spoken about that. Du, du, on a parlé du passé, mais le grand défi. We've spoken about the past, but the big challenges. Mais le, le grand défi aujourd'hui, c'est de. Or the big challenge today. C'est de penser justement la. Is to think. La, la vie d'aujourd'hui et de demain. Par rapport. Uh, about à... life today and tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, le Laos aujourd'hui euh, avec sa. Laos fragilité, today has become fragile. Doit confronter euh, doit affronter trois euh, le problème à trois niveaux and it has three it has problems on three different levels la la crise mondiale la crise qui est partagée so par tout le monde the global crisis which everybody is suffering c'est la crise de réchauffement climatique de l'environnement is the environmental crisis global warming et la crise que le Laos doit partager avec tous les pays du Sud. And uh, that is a, a crisis which is being shared with all of the countries in the South. C'est le problème de pauvreté ensuite. It's the problem of poverty. De, de manque de démocratie. Lack of democracy. Participative. Or participative democracy. Parce que nous voyons que because we can see les impacts euh, de guerre qui est décidé par the, the impacts of war which have decided the policies où la population n'a pas la part de responsabilité where the population does not have it doesn't have any responsibility for this et donc il faut toucher le point où, où ça fait mal enfin, je veux dire le, so, le point qui est, des, qui est décisif So we have to touch upon the decisive point. C'est de donner à, à la population It's les to give moyens, the population the means les moyens de s'exprimer to express themselves d'initier des choses, des projets to initiate projects and to protect themselves. Uh, Beaucoup de, de populations ne, savent, ne, connaît, ne connaissent pas le droit. A large part of the population isn't aware of their rights. They don't know what their rights are. Uh, leur droit à la protection. Their right to protection. À un environnement sain. À la santé. To a, a healthy environment, to health. À l'éducation. To education. Et surtout à l'information. And particularly to information l'information euh, sur le, leur devenir et leur euh, information about the future et le traitement de l'endroit ou de leur habitat and the treatment of their environment and their habitat on voit euh, que ce soit au Cambodge ou au Laos euh, so we can see that whether it's in Cambodia or in Laos euh, 
combien et beaucoup de territoires ont été décidés et how uh, what types of territories have been decided et les gens or, sont expropriés and people have been expropriated they've been evicted d'une d'une paysannerie riche de terre ils deviennent des ouvriers sans travail of a, from a landscape rich landscape um, and they have been left without work voilà je ça, ça c'est mon opinion et euh, that's et, my euh, opinion et retrouver le, la pensée écosophique c'est avant tout to donner la liberté à écosophique uh, thought donner la liberté à l'individu it's giving the individual freedom uh, la liberté de penser de, 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 to de, think. De, de, je vous remercie thank you very much yeah thank you very much uh, dr chapat sayara yes yeah um, thank you thank you um and you also emphasize the importance of uh, ecology and environment and also how to overcome the rhythm of the uh, war and uh we also now have uh experience from the uh, philippine and the next speaker is um uh, or there's a kai um, buhana is an aspiring uh, architect with an intention to venture in indigenous culture studies and is deeply affiliated with uh, the Ta Taladin, uh, Talan, uh, Talandi uh, indigenous people of uh, Bukido. She was one of the associates of Institute for Planning and Design, uh, University of St. Carlos, that uh, had a various community engagement during uh, Typhoon Haiyan in northern Cebu, uh, uh, Bantanyan uh, Island, participate in a research group for uh, Will International, former Homeless in International, that conduct community mapping in uh, Mandau, and Cebu urban poor uh, housing. She also, along with uh, Ciburon, uh, Burano uh, art artists, uh, did focus group rehabilitation for affected children in the aftermath of uh, Bohol uh, earthquake in 2013, engaging in community works and volunteerism through art and architecture have been her avenue and passions for several years. Uh, born and raised from the island of Mindanao, a true brother uh, Mindanaoan, she was uh, influenced to envision a progressive Mindanao uh, through the eyes of her grandparents, especially her grandfather, who was a World War II military veteran. Growing up, uh, learning uh, stories of Mindanao then and experiencing it through her adventure is where her story of uh, advocacy commence. Few of her visions are collected in projects ideas that plan to connect community-based enterprise, uh, co-fund um, not to know to open defecation defect campaigns in an, an in an uh, intention to help build sustainable toilets for far front areas, formulated a study on a vendorship system in the context of grassroots development, place making that support small scale human center design. So uh, please, uh, Odessa. Uh, so good evening, everyone. I'm going to present tonight a entitled A Reminiscence of Mindanao Past, Present and the Geosymbiotic Prospects. Um, allow me to present uh, in this first slide a, a photo dedication written by my grandfather uh, to a certain relative. It stated, for you, sis, to remember during those horrible days of our operation in Hulu, whom we have lost plenty of our soldiers in order to restore peace and order against the Moro outlaws and of war. One of the casualty in this group is driving the, I left it blank because uh, I cannot seem to determine the word, for the redemption of our nation and the trouble against the same. So this is basically a note from a soldier 
to a family with regards to his experience uh, during the war. And the front of this photo is this one. Um, this is taken back in October 1946, the 62nd PC Company Detachment in Subukan Lookulu, an operation against Moro outlaws uh, back in the days. Uh, my grandfather is, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, here, the one with an X on his uh, helmet. Yeah. So um, I think the, the best way for me to be able to speak about Mindanao and um, my visions with regards to it is that I need to uh, view it from the context of how my grandfather uh, basically learned and lived his life as a soldier back in uh, in the 1940s. So the past, Mindanao through the eyes of my late grandparents. Um, this is a family of my grandmother. Um, this is my grandmother. She's the second of the family. This is her uh, mother, our great-grandparent, great-grandmother that is. And um, they lived a, quite a good life in Mindanao. They lived in Surigao City, that is uh, partly in the northeastern part of Mindanao. And um, this is the, the great-grandfather. He was a forest, uh, he, was a, uh, he works with the forestry. He guarded the forest and from illegal loggers and um, he basically sustained a good life for the family. That is, um, this was my grandmother when he, she was still uh, around four or five years old. So these are uh, practically the siblings. This is my grandmother. This is the their mother, and their three other siblings. I think it is in the consequences of war that um, families tend to marry. Uh, soldiers uh, to be able to be sheltered from uh, from uh, the effects of uh, of war, and so uh, my grandmother she married uh, my grandfather who was a military, and then my uh, the sec uh, the eldest uh, she also married a military, and the third she also married a military. And then the youngest, uh, this person here on the right side, um, she married also a military, but of British, uh, who served with the British Army, and she lived in Australia for several years. So uh, this is my grandfather doing his desk works in uh, Mindanao. He was uh, his his name was uh, Lieutenant Leonardo Aron Bolan Senior. Uh, these are some portraits of the military military soldiers in Camp Evangelista Patag, Cagayan de Oro City in Mindanao, Philippines. And um, this is my grandfather, and this is also him. So these are also portraits and uh, class photos with the Philippine constable, Constabulary uh, during their uh, sessions. Uh, these are also portraits of the said military soldiers in Camp Overton, Lanao, Mindanao, Philippines. Um, this is basically the camp uh, currently situated in Cagayan de Oro City, Philippines. We live outside the military base in Mindanao. And this is just a portion. I just got this from the internet because we are basically not allowed to take photos and document um, the interior of the camp. Uh, so this is just a portion. And I remember back uh, when I was still a child, my grandfather would share to us that uh, the place in Cagayan was named Patag, which is in English means claim. Because uh, during the Japanese war, um, the vicinity were cratered because of the bombings. And with that, the military did all the 
rehabilitation of the site. So they basically made the, the ground plain. So in our dialect, we call it Patag. Thus, the place called Patag Cagayandero City, which is in Mindanao right, right now. So um, I will not dwell so much on the past, though, because uh, most of the, most if not all, well, most of those who are in, the, in that photos are already um, in heaven. So I'm, I would like to focus more on the present, the current situation, the news and affairs of Mindanao as to how it has been for the past several years after the war. So after the 1940s war during the American and the Japanese, the Mindanao is still in that same conflict, although it is experiencing a quite a civil war. Um, it is still in the midst of uh, progression, I should say, because um, apparently on the first upper photo, you will see a photo visual by Philippine Star. Uh, these are the residents evacuating during the Marawi City conflict back in 2017. And on the second photo is a photo visual uh, by the new humanitarian uh, it is a woman who walks through the rubbles in Marawi, in the Philippines, back in May 2018. That is three years after clashes between the military and insurgents leveled much of the city's central core in 2017. Tens of thousands of people are displaced, according to the UN. UN excuse me. And up until now, um, the area is still not accessible to the public. In fact, um, it is still under rehabilitation and the previous government, the Duterte administration, practically, practically did a good job in terms of rehabilitating the, the, the said city. Um, the war that uh, inflicted or that happened in Marawi was basically caused by the ISIS. I think um, it, it it was all over the news and um, the government tried to uh, uh, somehow silence and make sure that the war will not spread throughout Mindanao. So this is how the re rehabilitation has been going on for the past several years. Even the at the peak of the pandemic, um, the Duterte administration saw to it that the mosques uh, that was destroyed. That were destroyed because there were a couple of mosques uh, destroyed during the war, were basically rehabilitated and um, rebuilt, and also houses and housings sprouted all over Marawi for the purpose of um, a relocation of the uh, victims of the said war. So here. Um, this is a, if we talk about Mindanao, we do not just like talk about a certain uh, one aspect, but a whole lot of modality should be taken into context. And I don't think I will be in the best uh, fit to speak about most of the um, uh, different sectors of Mindanao because it's very vast. And I will just give a slight overview as to who are the, uh, the people that compose um, the, the populace or population of Mindanao. So these are the front runners, the MNLF or the, these are the rebel groups, the Moro National Liberation Front. Um, this was founded by Nur Miswari back in the 1940s. Uh, 1970s, I'm sorry. And then um, the MILF basically split away from the MNLF and created the MILF, or the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Um, it seek independence and Islamic central government in Mindanao, which is also still uh, was created back in 1972. So, um, in the news right now, the MNLF or the Moro National Liberation Front and the Armed Forces of the Philippines or the AFP 
have taken into context to um, work together against the ISIS or the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria that basically inculcate uh, um, that uh, somehow saw the chance to uh, seek um, to impose and to create chaos in Mindanao. And somehow, uh, this is the Bangsamoro people or the 13, 13 Islamized ethnolinguistic groups in um, Mindanao. These are the Kalibugan, Magindanawan, Maranao, Kagan, Sangil, Yakan, Tausug, Sama, the Palawani and Molbog, but the, um, the ARMM is an autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao that uh, saw to it to have uh, officially been converted to Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or the BARM. It is an autonomous region located in the southern Philippines, replacing the ARMM, and it is consists of the five predominantly Muslim provinces and it was signed into context by the previous administration, the Duterte um, government back in 2019. So this is to strengthen more the um, the the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao in Mindanao. So Mindanao and the indigenous Lumads and the Moro. The indigenous peoples in Mindanao is composed of a population of 2.1 million and is located in different provinces of Davao, Bukidnon, Surigao, Zamboanga, Agusan, Misamis, and Cotabato. The indigenous are the, particularly in Mindanao are found in almost all provinces. And these are the subgroups, namely the Manobo, Subanan, Bilaan, Tiboli, Mandaya, Mansak, Tiruray, Higaonon, Bagobo, Bukidnon, Tagkaulo, Banwaon, Talaandig, Dibabawon, Mamanwa, and Manguan. Um, when we speak of Mindanao, we do not uh, just talk about the different uh, ethnic groups, but basically all the other indigenous Lumans as well, which was uh, aforementioned. Uh, with the lo long colonial rule in the Philippines, the migration have, the urban migration and the domestic mig migration may have influenced indigenous peoples, territories, and their way of living. So I would just like to share, this is a portion of one of my travels to Mukidnon with the with the Tiguanan tribe. This was taken back in 2009, my first visit to San Fernando Bukidnon in Mindanao. So we went, I went there with a friend and we stayed for a night and enjoyed the, the context of uh, their culture and we learned so much from them that time. Uh, we found out that there are basically seven tribes in Bukidnon alone, and um, the San Fernando Tiguanon was one of them. So what is the future that I would want to um, for, uh, vision in Mindanao, visualize in Mindanao, is uh, the one that I was able to somehow um, collate in the context of geosymbiotic prospects um, that I was able to discuss with Professor Takeshi back in 2020. And it is one of the visions that I hope and one day we'd be able to implement or somehow uh, find into probabilities, uh, find its way to the indigenous uh, communities because um, it is considered that in Mindanao, although diverse, the indigenous people are considered to be the poorest of the poor. This is mainly because they live in far-flung areas and 
they somehow have no access to um, better education, although right now it has been um, quite progressive because I have learned to see a lot of indigenous communities graduating and becoming professionals already. And um, although they, there are just a, a couple of few of them, but uh, that is already a, a, a good um, progress. So one of the communities that is uh, plainly dear to me is the, the, the one in Lantapan Bukidnon in Mindanao, which is the Talandig tribe. Uh, the belief system of the Talandig and the existence of gods and spirits is also reflected in the protection of the house. These include the Dagunan, Pusugui, who guards the lawn of the house, Anilaw Hasamagda, who guards the door, Sinyuda Kaibunan, who keeps the hall, Diwata Hamanli, who records the activity of the people inside the house, and Diwata Pinatanlay, who guards the house at the ridge of the roof. Um, the belief system of the indigenous culture, particularly the Talaandig, is practically animistic. So, animism, so they believe in spirits also, and they believe in um, the wata, like I said, the spirits. So, the Talandig are one of the indigenous groups in the province of Bukidnon, Mindanao, Philippines, who has continued to preserve and promote its indigenous customs, beliefs, and practices despite the strong influx of modernization and change. So the population is roughly estimated around 100,000, but um, they are scattered all over the mountains of Kitanglad, not just in one portion, in Lantapan. And uh, um, the municipality surrounding the mountains of Kitanglad and the historic domain of the Talandig people also is uh, somewhat uh, connected with the Kitanglan range and the mountains because they are believed to be the guardians of the said mountain. So the Talandig are one of the indigenous groups and has continued to preserve and promote its indigenous customs. So I think this is already repeated. So these are some photos taken um, in the community. This is the Datu. This is their uh, traditional wear. These are the Babaylans or the, 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 the healers. This is their um, ritual and their festival that happens every October of the year. Third, around second or third uh, week of October, and there are um, visitors all over the Philippines and from other countries also that tend to visit the said community. The Talandig are semi-settled agriculturists. They're considered to be farmers. Eventually, um, they have ventured into different uh, ways of uh, earning and I somehow have forgotten to put photos here wherein they do enjoy um, painting uh, soil paint, uh, creating soil paintings and creating um, tumbles or drums. Um, I may have forgotten uh, th that is one of the, uh, those works that I can really tell that they are one with nature and their craftsmanship is exquisite. So um, back in farming, they do plant corn, rice, fruit crops, abaca, and banana. These crops are usually uh, produced at consumption level only. So this is for their use and some for selling, but not so much because there have been a law that um, disables them to to convert um, land to agriculture because uh, they they were relocated from the uh, foot of the Kitanglad Mountains to a certain community a uh, few kilometers away. So 
so that is why they ventured into different kinds of um, craftsmanship and subsistence level economy that uh, they tend to raise chickens, pigs, and other livestock for the purpose that they can feed their family or they can sell it to the nearby market and somehow convert uh, it to money and buy goods. So um, the pigs and chickens are also utilized for the purpose of religious uh, activities while large animals such as horses and caribals are used for payment. So payment of debt and other financial obligations. So they convert um, these uh, caribals and horses as mode of payment also. So the Talandic technology includes blacksmithing, um, weaving, embroidery, hunting, and food gathering. So since uh, the Talandig are farmers by nature, it was one of our um, visions back in 2020 to come up with a, some of the social enterprise and a platform for them to be able to earn um, uh, quite a living for their basic needs. And this is when the Jasonbiotic prospects and visions came in. So the purpose of um, this um, idea was to somehow understand the needs of the community at the same time um, provide a livelihood and take care of the grassroots, uh, grassroots community in in Bukidnon. Um, can I pause for like a few seconds? I'll just uh, charge my laptop early. So going back, um, we created this sort of campaign, which we call the No to Open Defecation campaign back in 2018. This was with the office I was uh, affiliated back then, the Institute for Planning and Design. And um, we had this sort of campaign to end defecation in far-flung areas in the Philippines, particularly um, the remote and the rural areas in uh, the Visayas and in Mindanao. So first activity we did was a installation of a certain um, uh, din dining setup with the water closet as chairs. And we gathered uh, some of the architects and interior designers, as well as the engineers to join us with the said campaign. So this was the campaign that uh, looked like in the university. We also created different um, collaterals and visuals that we gave away during 2020 um, at the peak of the corona uh, lockdowns in Cebu. So the purpose of uh, this is to create a, a livelihood by means of um, planting lufa. So when we when we spoke about it with um, Professor back then, um, the idea was not quite something that would um, ignite interest from others because um, what is lufa anyway, right? So, yeah, what is lufa? Lufa is a tropical and subtropical uh, vines in the cucumber family. It is rich in vitamin C and copper. And um, it is easy to grow and it is somehow um, low maintenance and you can plant it anywhere. And if we choose the Talandic tribe in Bukidnon, they have a few 
backyards that we can use for this purpose of um, growing lufa. And then um, that won't hurt so much in terms of maintenance and in terms of capital in their part. So the lufa, we intend to grow it in a manner to come up with different um, with different uh, materials and for different uh, products. And here are the pointers in growing lufa. It's basically simple. And um, lufa as byproduct is a popular byproduct as bathroom accessory. So it's um, it's somewhat um, off key and not quite attractive. But if we look into context and if we look into um, how small the, the proposal is, yet the impact is huge for the community once they get to earn um, uh, by planting lufa and how it will be able to help the environment as well. So lufa in the cosmetic industry is used to exfoliant skin. So it is also a common household use as a sponge. So if we replace your uh, traditional sponge with the microplastics, that can basically, you can practically save um, the planet by not, uh, not spreading microplastics to the ocean. So by using loofah that can um, just decompose at your own backyard is a huge thing already. And in... Also in Paraguay, there is a project that uh, lufa was created into house panels. So somehow we can create um, panels in a, a low cost um, system and with the use of lufa. So the global market demand for lufa, if I may go back already, um, it is in the health and wellness, and hygiene, beauty, as well as in architecture. So apart from that, it can be a viand. It's a healthy viand that is um, um, abundant in vitamin C. So here are samples of different um, byproducts and products that we can create by planting lufa and by creating lufa rolls that you can use in the bathroom or cleaning your house. The lufa sponge can be created and used for... Um, for when you take a bath or clean your body, or if you slice it up to small, uh, small pieces, you can create and use it as an alternative sponge. The lufa mat uh, practically can be used for sleeping or for campings and for um, use of uh, just for the purpose of sleeping for those who are um, living in um, or those who cannot afford to uh, have a mattress and the lufa powder, which was mentioned already that it can be used for cleaning your skin. So we have um, researched the potentials of lufa in relation to the circular economy, lufa being active uh, material, raw and byproduct, which is also pro-environment, alternative for minimal household sponge use, as I mentioned a while ago. So these are also acoustic panels that was created in one of the studies in Brazil, which uh, they used lufa for wall panels. And uh, the, the my favorite part is this one, when the lufa can be used for rail hand and leg fiber for castings and for the purpose of uh, rehabilit rehabilitation of um, for the body. And also there are um, packagings and protectors and enclosures and other products that was also um, uh, developed using lufa as a material. And this one uh, for the panels for shelter in Paraguay, and this is uh, made of lufa also. So the lufa project is um, quite a our project flow we created back in 2020. Apparently, it was an 
somehow almost an entire year of brainstorming with the different um, students from Japan and with the geosymbiotic context and concept of um, proposals. So uh, we had this draft for overflow as to how the business will be uh, will be um, implemented. So we thought we can go buy for LUFA through our partner communities and then grow LUFA from these partner communities, which is the Talandig tribe. And then the LUFA, and then uh, grow LUFA from these partner communities. So they can basically create and come up with this uh, byproducts in their own uh, communities, in their own backyard, because um, they do have this, what we call, um, um the, the 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 businesses that they create in their in the comforts of their homes by um creating soil paintings they they create uh, music products they create um coffee grounds and different um coffee like arabica and um arabica and uh, robusta in the comforts of their home so we intend to uh, create a product development and then um, do more study with regards to it and sell it online because which is where is the better and the best platform to create and to sell uh, um, goods right now is through an online market. So here is, uh, I will just run through with this because um, this is practically 62 slides and I think I'm running out of time. And then so in our phase one, we go by LUFA for the community partners. So um, we intend to put uh, our, one of our products is you can basically grow your own LUFA if you live in the urban. And then when you buy the box with the seeds, the manual, and all the other tools intended for farming, um, uh, you can create a partnership with the communities already. And somehow the tools and seeds and fertilizers can be distributed to a partner community. So when you buy the product and you don't intend to um, to plant it anyway, you donate it to the community that uh, plans to uh, grow the, the lufa on your behalf. So, so on phase two, um, like we like I mentioned, so you grow the uh, how how to grow lufa manual to be distributed to partner communities, and um, and we create manuals with instructions and guides and information how to grow and maintain Lufa Garden on your own or for a bigger context. And this can be translated in English, in dialect, or Japanese. And then these will be included in the package. And um, like I said, the content of the box. The content of the box is um, with the seeds, the tools, and fertilizer, and the set, the manual. So these are basically small tool gardenings, uh, small gardening tools in fertilizers, manuals, and the seeds that we buy and put in box. And then uh, the proceeds from this uh, so-called um, box is basically um, used to build toilets for the communities. So the purpose is that um, we help farmers be, be able to plant lufa by purchasing this uh, lufa box for the communities. But if you do not intend to plant it yourself, the said lufa box will go to the, the tribe, to the community. And every purchase of the said box um, part of the proceed is used to uh, finance the toilet that we intend to build in communities. 
So um, we mark the beneficiaries and extended beneficiaries of the uh, of this project, so we can determine who and where we who we give the 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 toilets and where we build the toilets as well. So what we wanted to do before was to partner with the Lantapan Bukidnon Indigenous Peoples, which is the Talandi community, like I mentioned. And we created um, different designs of toilets that uh, some are latrines. Some are, I remember some students from Japan created um, proposals with uh, Lufa being um, planted at the upper part of the roof. And it was uh, quite uh, interesting. So here, this is just a simple um, toilet that we wanted to build in one of the communities in Bukidnon and in other rural areas who, can, who we can see fit as beneficiaries. So uh, this was the campaign that we created, the No to Open Defecation campaign. So practically in the Philippines, although it's even myself, I was quite um, stunned with the context or the, with the idea that um, defecation, open defecation is still happening. And when we go to the far flung areas, like in our experiences in the during the Haiyan um, community um, site visits that we did back in 2013, it's practically true that some um, communities still have no access to better toilet and to uh, proper sanitation. And uh, the government uh, eyed for a 2022 uh, zero defecation for the Philippines, although it is already progressing, but still um, a lot of the community still need to be um, uh, to be taken care of and to look into. So uh, part of our vision is to provide comfortable and proper sanitary solutions for beneficiaries in far-flung barrios and to allow communities to uh, defecate with integrity in a safe environment, which is um, for them is somewhat uh, a dream while we do it in a very um, ordinary and normal uh, system for them that is basically a luxury. So we also vision to promote community utmost potential for basic uh, sustainability through small scale enterprise in a move for a better normal. So that was uh, our con concept of helping farmers being able to plant the lufa, and that is somehow to promote um, uh, their potential as farmers as well. So the cluster will spearhead effective collaborati collaborations with different stakeholders and with similar with a similar objective, although. Um, this is not uh, not yet the final um, output that we intend to implement, but uh, this is just part of the draft and any stakeholders that we intend to partner with, I hope that um, we can also um, rearrange and um, revise some portions because um, this proposal was back in 2020 and Practically everything and a lot of things have changed since then. And um, some of our vision and mission, um, we, we intend to host partnerships and collaborations through human-centered innovation. So I think this is something that I admire with the concept of geosymbiosis the geosymbiotic because it is human centered and it practically um, look um, it practically um, um, navigate the purpose of uh, why we help communities and why uh, we aim to um, develop like I mentioned here uh, underdeveloped household or communities apply reform technical uh, accomplishments and mo motivate 
access to basic toilet amenity for a depiction of dignified and improved living condition for the sad communities in every household. And if we go to the indigenous communities in Bukidnon, particularly some areas in the Daraguyan tribe, those that I visited in back in 2009, which was the San Fernando, the Tiguanan tribe, they had no access to this uh, luxury, to these basic needs. And um, that was in 2009. And we can only imagine how long ago that was. And they still suffer and they still live in such condition. So the most important part of this um, collaboration or our vision collaboration is to incorporate with the uh, different um, government organizations like the DOH accreditation, the, DO, the Department of Agriculture and the SEC registration. So if I may end my slide, um, I leave you with this two photos of um, breathtaking scenery in Mindanao. On the left side is the Bukidnon mountain ranges. This is practically um, one of the views that you will get to see when you visit the tribe in San Fernando. And it is one of the most, uh, one of the protected uh, mountains in Mindanao. And on the right portion of the, the slide is the this is a sandbar, white island, that is fronting the Kamigin Island, which is also one of the breathtaking views of um, Mindanao, um, if I may say so. Um, as I've mentioned, all the poverty and all the wars going on in Mindanao, it is um, a beautiful island. It is a progressive island with rich natural resources and um, the people are quite diverse and very friendly, I must say, as long as we intend to um, meet each other halfway, I think uh, Mindanao will prosper in a manner that it will be one of the best uh, um, islands of the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Odessa, your presentation about the uh, importance of uh, indigenous culture and rural communities, and also how the uh, production of uh, rover and ecological toilets can be a, uh, can be used as a tool for social uh, transformation. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have the uh, last speaker, uh, Professor Takashi. Um, he, uh, Professor Takashi, is a uh, founder advocate for a new uh, neologism, uh, geosim. Um, where the existing term is given a new meaning, the uh, attitude, stripe, um, state of a harmonic coexistence of all living forms of on Earth. And he is in continuous search for the based tangible and intangible design, the geosemiotic design. The very question, how can we uh, innovatively design we design our world for geosimulosis, uh, brought him to investigate in all the inhabiting issues regardless of discipline. He is an associate professor and hosts a uh, geosimulosis and design lab at uh, Satsuna University, Faculty of Science and Engineering, Living and Environmental Design Department in Osaka, Japan. Initial background has an architecture designer, uh, engineer, and investigation in different countries, lead him to design innovative sustainable timber joint system that allows use of underutilized uh, low-grade timber around the world. After the nuclear power plant disaster in Fukushima, with his partner, uh, Westner uh, Shiratori created the Geowanda education system to, to nurture geosimulotic youth from uh, preschool to higher education while they wander in the world of interest freely. He is continuously accumulating the fundings from his geosimulotic workshops and design projects that bring opportunity for, 
for co collab uh, for collaboration with the device locals to bring design solutions for coexistence. Um, please, Professor Takashi. First of all, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Uh, I would like to present uh, my uh, presentation, the efforts to understand the consequences of Agent Orange, designing projects for reversion through the Geosymbiotic Workshop, Vietnam 1 and 2. So my uh, content will be uh, two parts. One, what is geosymbiosis? And what is geosymbiotic workshop? How do we achieve geosymbiosis? And then second part, I will get into the actual project that I did in Vietnam, especially uh, about Agent Orange. And I'll talk about the aims of the project. And also I will go over what is Agent Orange all about and the consequences of Agent Orange and the awareness that we must have now at the present. And then finally, show the designing project for reversion towards geosymbiotic revitalization for humanity. And so introduction, what is geosymbiosis and geosymbiotic workshop? Geosymbiosis is a coined word of geo meaning earth and symbiosis meaning coexistence. And it is an existing word from uh, microbiology. But I gave a new meaning, which is a vision and the attitude to strive for the harmonic coexistence of all living forms on earth. Why? Because we are in need of a new vision for coexistence on earth. Oops, sorry. And problems around the world today. It is not hard to find all the problems that we face today the invasion of another land, many lives taken, poverty and natural disasters, a nuclear power plant explosion. We need to reset our minds towards a new design method, a movement to re redesign our world. And that is the most important thing that uh, pushed me to create this new uh, vision. So it is to provoke ourselves as citizens of earth to find new ways of dealing with issues prohibiting us from our harmonic coexistence. That is geosymbiosis. So let us admit, we really don't know how to live in harmony together. We really don't know each other and we really don't know the existing local real issues. So let us collaborate for our own common goals, which is geosymbiosis, to live in harmony. And we make alliances as citizens of Earth. And how do we achieve geosymbiosis? Sorry. Um, I don't know how to erase this, uh, Bart. Okay. How do we achieve uh, geosymbiosis? So let us create an opportunity first to collaborate. So we, I open an event called Geosymbiotic Workshop. I choose different countries with different real uh, needs and issues. And by uh, doing a pro uh, sorry, uh, through the process of on-site collaboration, we do investigative projects. And through the project, we start to understand what is going on, what is really going on behind the scenes. So let us find innovative ways together to bring solutions. So after we have a geosymbiotic workshop to collaborate together, and then we do a little projects that satisfies what their needs are. And then we actually come up to the big issue, how to find innovative ways to solve them that has been unsolved for centuries. By doing so, we accumulate this thing called geosymbiotic design, which can be very effective to solve other real issues around the world. So geosymbiotic uh, diagram, um, sorry. Do you see my tool uh, bar in the way? Sorry. No. No? Okay. Yeah, we don't see the bar. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I'll continue. This is a geosymbiotic diagram to guide our collaboration. So it is made out of three pillars, 
humanity, sustainable development, and innovation. And I will go through it again later, but first of all, I put humanity into this uh, guidance. Why? Because it is the ability missing in many research actions, as I will explain later. And in humanity, I put the word sensing, empathy, understanding. These are the very important aspects to understand the other people's real issues. And sustainable development, we often use environmental, social, and economic. However, after I had experience to collaborate with the indigenous people in Canada, I realized that the monetary system is actually made for those countries and people who invented them. So we need another system, what I call SHARES, which is a sustainable human alliance for revolutionary exchanging of support. So we seek means to support each other without depending on money. Why? Because the people who thought about the money system always win. And fraud cannot be always uh, take advantage of the system when it comes to shares. And finally, I included this very word, all life forms, because we tend to forget. We only think about humans, but we actually have to think about all life forms if we want to keep our ecosystem. It's very simple, but we do forget. And then finally, putting it all together after research, we do creation. And I encourage mixed culture, which is not the same as assimilation, but it's actually what should have been done long time ago, which is to mix our culture with respect on the table of innovation. So we do not offend or destroy each other. So uh, the actual project, Joseph Biak workshop in Vietnam. I have been in Vietnam twice. And the basic core was to understand the Asian orange and its effects. These are the project logos. I always make project logos before uh, we go in to the site. Why? Because it allows us to summarize what we really are going there for. 2018, the project named White Sand and the Colors of Geosymbiosis. White Sand, actually a lotus. White lotus is favored in Vietnam culture because they come up from the dirt, the mud, and uh, they will bloom very white, innocent, clean, beautiful flowers. So we combine with the origami paper folding technique to make this flower sand. and also reminds us of the high mountains in the Northern Vietnam. So 2018, I made this logo, including the blue and green, so that the war will never make these colors into another. And we did a project in North and South Vietnam in 2018. In 2019, we challenged the Central Vietnam, Da Nang area, and also Aluor, which was a heavily sprayed, AO uh, sprayed region, which affected the ethnic minorities there, who had a very uh, beautiful traditional techniques to use bamboo for their uh, community centers, housings, and even food. So the project logo included bamboo, earth, and animals, because Agent Orange not only harmed humans, but it terminated many animals in the environment. So these colors uh, inside the two rings of blue and green shows 54 different colors, which was actually uh, retrieved from the 53 uh, tribes in Vietnam. In Vietnam, there's one Kin people, we, which are the major majority, and the rest of the 53 are actually 13% of the population. So we included this 53 colors, uh, plus one, which is 54, and that represents a Vietnam in its uh, symbiotic existence with all the ethnic minorities and the majority. And we actually included one more color so that us from outside can collaborate and exist in harmony. And on the right, it represents the face of an animal. At the same time, it represents the Asian orange who is deep down in the ground, contaminating the land. But we are hoping that the Katu people and their cultures will always rise up and bloom again into their history of the future. So the aims of the Symbiotic Workshop Vietnam 1 and 2 
First of all, it was to understand the consequences and the now of the real issues of war, especially Agent Orange, through our collaborative projects. And number two, bringing stimulus for reversion to AO survivors for our harmonic co coexistence, which I call geosymbiosis. And by, to do that, we use this geosymbiotic design outcomes, which I will show later. And third part, which was, uh, which I will not present today, but it was to work with uh, ethnic minorities to create new dance, new uh, livelihoods, and even to uh, support their traditional structures by making a, a bamboo gate that will help them to transfer their techniques to the next generation. So in brief, this is what we did in 2018 and 2019. In 2018, uh, Tudu Hospital, which you have seen in uh, Mr. Nishimura's presentation, these uh, horrifying uh, specimens which are stored into this hospital. And many children who are abandoned by parents are accepted in this hospital, nurtured and cared. However, they are staying in this hospital for a very long time. And some who are very much disabled are always staying in the bed facing the same wall. Another one, 2019, we went to Da Nang, central Vietnam, to do an artwork collaboration project with Da Nang Bava, which is the Association for um, Dioxin uh, Victims, especially children and youth, and unfortunate children are cared at this day, daycare center. So let us go back in brief to think about a major uh, geosynthesis inhibiting issue is the Asian orange. Many people already know that 1961 to 1971, US military sprayed herbicides containing dioxin in southern, southern Vietnam. But what many don't know is that less than three sugar cubes, nine grams of dioxin can kill eight million people, eight million. And these are the most toxic of man-made chemicals. And very small amount but still fatal, and it's very hard to detect. That's what's making dioxin a very difficult thing for the researchers to deal with. Further, 72 million gallons of herbicides containing approximately 170 kilogram of dioxin were sprayed in South Vietnam. That can kill 151 billion people, 151 billion. This is the actual spring map showing the spring missions in South Vietnam. And I have collaborated with the Katu people in Aluoy district. And there are ethnic minorities living mainly on agriculture and handicrafts. So imagine the crops and the forest toxicated by this herbicide. How awful that is for their everyday living. The big questions not answered clearly. Where did the dioxins go? So the people are wondering, are we safe now or are we still in danger? And what are the, these severe symptoms? Aren't that severe symptoms Agent Orange related? In many reports, they deny a direct link to these severe symptoms and awful horrifying symptoms that you have seen in this Nishimura's photos. Dioxins are invisible and that is what makes them unclear and they are threatening people's everyday lives. And many argue that dioxins do not dissolve in water, so it are in the bottom of the lakes. It's also taken in by human through food chain. And then the mother's dioxin gets concentrated and passed on through placenta and breast milk. And not just humans, animals, they peck on the ground contaminated by dioxins, they eat the insect and food chain accumulates, bioaccumulation of dioxins occur. So what is dioxin again? It is a byproduct that accidentally was created during the process of making herbicide. Agent Orange was just one of the colors of the band that the US military used as herbicides. There were many different types in different band colors, but the nickname was Asian Orange. And within the dioxins, 2378 PCDD, 
This dioxin is the most toxic of all dioxin compounds. And again, it is colorless, insoluble to water, but soluble to most organic solvents. So they dissolve in human fat or fish or chicken. And then again, many researchers try to identify this dioxin in the environment and in the people. But it's making analysis difficult because the concentration of PCBD varies by production, the run, the factory. Some early report assumed very low dioxin, but that wasn't true. And then spray emission records, it wasn't precise enough. Amount, concentration, location, and the site conditions, it's not all plain flat land. So these uncertainty remains. And further, various harmful effects and levels among and within barrels. Like Agent Blue contained arsenic in earlier productions high in 2378 PCBD. So if you read read the reports carefully, there are many errors, many assumptions that are not correct anymore. And the controversy over the effects of dioxins. Many reports are denying clear connection between the severe health status. But how can we explain all the photos, all the footage that Ms. Nishimura has kept record? And how about the symptoms of not just the first, but the second, third, and even further generations of AO survivors? How do we Consider that. And now we talk about hotspot theory. There is a consultant named Hatfields, and they were famous for their dioxin hotspot theory. What it is, is in brief, they're saying that highly con contaminated spots are actually where the former US Air Force base was. Why? Because there were severe attacks for these uh, bases and they didn't want the forest, the jungle to surround them to make a hideout for these uh, Vietnam soldiers. So they sprayed herbicides heavily around the perimeter, perimeter. And also they disposed many gallons of herbicides when they were abandoned to use. So what they decided to do is to follow this dioxin hotspot theory by Hatfield to prioritize the soil remediation projects in the US base. Now some is still ongoing and some finished. It is surprising that Danan International Airport extension is that was actually one of these remediation sites where many tourists come all over from all over the world. So again, what they're saying is that the former US base and surrounding is highly contaminated. And that's why they put a lot of money to clean it up. However, many reports argue that other areas aerially sprayed during the war are now close to background levels. Or maybe some factories burning illegal things have higher dioxin. So they consider the other places normal. And they consider these cases as a mirror standard for all other locations in South Korea. Is that so? So Aso Airport area, that was the former uh, base area. And I have collaborated with the people, uh, Katu people in Hongha home state. And they were located really close to Hamburger Hill. Some of you know from the movie. And Danan International Airport, which is on the bottom, was completed in 2018. Uh, uh, remediation was completed. But when I went to search the area, what about these locations away from the remediation hotspot? There are cows drinking the sediment with water. Where did the dioxins go? Where will the dioxins go? In the water, in the soil. And some say it can contaminate groundwater. Some said that it doesn't dissolve in water, so it will not contaminate on groundwater, but some says it does. Why? Because particles and oils contaminate with dioxins that occasionally result in contamination of groundwater. So if you think about it, it's not just water around. When there is bombing or when there is this awful, um, oh, I forget the name, but, so, but these bombs that contain uh, severe uh, 
gel gelatinous uh, oil to burn humans as a weapon, they can dissolve dioxins. Terrestrial and aquatic animals consume dioxins on plants and in the air, water, sediment, and soil. So we have to think about all the creatures to look at the dioxins. And chemical half-life of this dioxin, surficial soils, top 0 0.1 centimeter is 9 to 12 years. However, deeper soils, 25 to 100 years. Sediments, X hundred years. So how can we say that it is safe? It is natural level. This is a village near Assol Air Base. And you can see cows are walking freely, eating whatever they want. And you can see on the back, the mountains, it still doesn't grow, the trees doesn't grow. So what do we do with these places? The soil, the cow, the animals. But people have to still live. People have to cultivate. People have to do agriculture. So people, especially ethnic people, are not giving enough information to understand what is going on. So one ethnic minority that I have interviewed have told me that I don't know what is happening. But it seems like there's more cancer around the village. The information has to be open. Information has to be clearly understood and explained and put effort to explain. Because these contaminated soils have exceptionally high PCB levels measured according to these reports. When I asked the locals, investigation of the effect of herbicide to human body was not done until foreign scientists came. But a few years later, blood test was conducted to all locals by Vietnamese government. During these times, nobody was explaining what is going on. And further, but the results were not open to public and only until years later, they were warned not to eat intestines and fats of animals and fishes. But the local resident says, they have nowhere to go. They have nowhere to live. We have to live here. So I see the contradictions. This report by Mr. Uh, Dr. Young says, however, levels of PCDD in their tissues were generally comparable to other Asian populations. So he's saying it was normal. Allegations of cancers, other diseases, and horrific birth defects due to residual dioxins on the public health of these communities have not been validated. So he's saying there's no proof that Asian Orange did this. And this man, Dr. Young is also called Dr. Orange, as I will explain later. So, Mr. Nishimura's presentation earlier showed us the horrifying consequences of Agent Orange, and it is still bringing agony to the generations of Ayo survivors. And just briefly, what I have explained in the last presentation. I believe that soil remediation of the hotspots are not enough. Hotspot theory may be too optimistic and may lead to underestimating the danger of various military herbicides used under different conditions over Vietnam. And there are some uh, news reports which I could not retrieve anymore and I cannot quote, unfortunately, but they were saying that during the remediation of certain airports, they didn't do the sediments. It was too difficult, so they just left it as is. We have to really investigate in close look. And it is short-sighted to assume low contamination by only measuring a few spots, while having any uncertainness in the evaluation criteria. So there is a good report by Stellman and the team. And they're very careful and they're very thorough in going through the military records. They even detected that some amounts of dioxins were off by zero, meaning um, 10 times. So the numbers were incorrect. One zero was missing in the number. So how can they determine if the dioxin is low in level or high when they have such a mistake? And the reactions of the local ethnic community toward the present conditions of AOB, I don't know, not clear, is really understandable because even the reports 
scientific academic reports say it's two different things. So what I uh, wish to advocate is to have combined remediation techniques to bring safety to soil, water, and sediment for all life forms, to bring the healthy food chain and ecosystem to fully recover. This is essential for all people and living forms alike. And now we go to the story about Dr. Orange. There exists official reports by authoritarian figures of dioxin, Asian Orange research, that almost always deny linkage to symptoms of AO survivors. And that is now a question for reliability. And I didn't realize this, but I felt something was wrong, something didn't make sense. But then I, I encountered our geosymbiosis inhibiting issues in Japan, which was Okinawa, Agent Orange report. By investigating Agent Orange in Vietnam, I came to come across Okinawa Agent Orange. In Japan, there was Agent Orange. But again, this Dr. Orange, Alvin Young, denies that. He is the scientist who insists Agent Orange isn't hurting America's veterans. And they went to him every time when there's a dispute. He always turned against the linkage to Agent Orange. And Mother Jones is an independent magazine widely known for its investigative reports. You can uh, read about them in their reports. So going back to Agent Orange in Okinawa, Dr. Orange says there was no Agent Orange present in Okinawa, while John Mitchell, a well-known journalist said hundreds of thousands of service members, their families and residents have been exposed, but the United States has hidden the damage and refused to help victims. So who do we believe? The facts are the, that epi uh, epidemiological studies of Vietnam veterans have not shown that this group has higher mortality or morbidity for the diseases currently presumptively connected to herbicide exposure. That was what Dr. Young said. And he has a collection of uh, reports, 70 peer-reviewed reports. He is involved in all phases of Agent Orange research. And he is the one that wrote the report that brings the environmental fate in health impact studies to go to left or right. And if you look back, about the Vietnamese scientist, Dr. Tom Tat Tung. He left an interview in YouTube in 1981. Since the beginning, as I mentioned before in my diagram, where's empathy and understanding? He said, we conducted a statistical study of the patients who came to us from the South and found out high incidence of miscarriages and deformed stillborn babies known as monster pepices. In 1972, when we first called attention to this problem at a conference in Paris, people attacked us for being unscientific. Foreign scientists at that time said that we were only spreading anti-US propaganda. Is that really so? Sometimes academics are wrong. So academic research reports and authority misused against humanity is the geosymbiosis inhibiting ongoing issue number one that I would like to mention. In pure science, an authoritarian method lost its reason to exist for humanity. Is that so or not? Is up to us to judge. And this is why in the diagram, I said ability missing in many research actions. How can you justify these specimens? How can we justify these horrible symptoms? Why do we not listen to these people who have said that until there was the war, there were no symptoms like this? Horrible remains should speak for itself as the highly possible proof. Another authority misuse against humanity. 
Monsanto Australia. Monsanto is well known for their bad reputation as a manufacturer of Agent Orange and many herbicides that is causing lawsuits all over the world. And the result of some of the epidemiological uh, studies on cancer risk associated with exposure to these compounds have been manipulated and misinterpreted, particularly by the Australian Royal Commission on the use and effects of chemical agents on Australian personnel in Vietnam. There are report, reports of such that you can find. Where are we going with Agent Orange? John Mitchell also created a movie, a documentary that was awarded and opened the Pandora's box in Japanese Agent Orange issues. AO was stored in Okinawa at US military base without consent. 187 barrels were found under the former military base site, which was returned to Okinawa. Some clearly mark the name of the company that produced Agent Orange. And there's photos of that proof. And now the final argument and going into details. Despite of all these controversial arguments taking place, what is the most important? It is the support of AO survivors. While the Vietnam remediation projects on hotspots are progressing and some announced complete, the human victims of Agent Orange have been left behind. As many articles or news uh, reports as such expresses, and as many of us expresses, it is the second geosymbiosis inhibiting ongoing issue that I would like to point out. And time is ticking, making analysis more difficult for many. Many cases of unreported death symptoms during the war are omitted. Some said it was, it was not scientific, but it was during the war and many people were dying one after another. How can they make documents in details? These things we have to consider. So I questioning the academic relevance in these situations. And passing decades since the exposure to AO make chronological observations nearly impossible to separate Agent Orange and non-Agent Orange elements. And some claim that local contamination from factories are even bigger than Agent Orange. But everything is unclear. So thinking that Agent Orange survivors are the most important to tackle, efforts to bring back humans using tangible and intangible design projects is what geosymbiotic workshops is all about. When I visited the War Remnant Museum, I saw these pictures on the outside where many cars are passing. On the road, you can see these children who are affected by Asian Orange, shown big on their wall. And I wonder, do they have enough chance to fulfill their lives? Or will they be only seen as a saddened, real living proof? Who can be responsible for their only one life used for this hardship? And among many articles that I read about the AO hardship, I found photos of children and youth that I met in Tulu Hospital, which I'll explain later. Among many photos, including that of the specimen of birth defect and stargazing or lost mother who gave birth to the brainless baby. I found the photo of a small girl, the photo on the right, and some others, which were also the AO survivors whom I met at the Tulu Hospital. When we look at the Asian orange, these sad, horrific specimen, and these children who are still alive and who became used who are still alive are put on the same page. So what we try to do is create toys through our toy design and collaboration. Can we give them the fun and the timeless experience? So self-set goals for ourselves, children and youth of different levels of disability can change, enjoy the adequate complexity of the toy and play. So we just don't wanna buy a toy and bring it to play. No, we want to make it custom design to satisfy their needs. And one can enjoy and understand without speaking any language because these children cannot speak or understand or even read some words. 
but there are different levels of children. So not all uh, can or cannot read or speak. But how can we suit them? And how can we connect the hospital atmosphere to the vast world, imagination outside? And how can they extend the experience beyond our visit? Because our visit was only two days. So we have to do everything in a very short time. So to do toy project collaboration, we call it the window to the timeless world for our blue skywalkers. This is the actual hospital. These are the students that went with me. And this girl on the right is actually the girl whom I saw, showed you on this photo when she was young. Her mother passed away after a week after she brought her to the hospital. So this is a hallway that many of them spend a long time. Many who can't move freely spend most of their times inside their bedrooms or at this hallway. And when I first visited, a child came and pointed out to my bag. She wanted to open and see what is there. It was just an ordinary bag and ordinary pens and books were in it. But like a treasure from an unknown world, she opened the zipper, she pulled out one by one, carefully not to break it, although it doesn't break. And then I sensed that she's lacking something. She needs stimulus. She needs intellectual stimulus for her imaginary world. Another child, disorder in her limbs and often ill, she spends her time in the bed facing the same wall. Every time I look in the YouTube and every time I search, I see this girl and I see her in the same angle. So how can I make her enjoy her life? Although we know she's destined to stay there for the longest time. And what we tried to do is we designed toys and play with them and interact with them. It seems like nothing. But however, to go to this hospital, first you have to register, you have to send in your passport number, you have to get approved. And then once you go there, you realize that nobody knows that you're coming. And the nurses there do not talk to you. They, every question I ask, they say that they are not privileged to answer any questions. So we have to do everything by observation. We do not speak Vietnamese and children surely doesn't speak much or no language. So we designed different toys. This one is called Window to the Timeless World. It's actually handcrafted paintings showing different story provoking images. This girl who has a, a curved back, she always, uh, is left on the table. The nurse comes and she puts the girl on the table and leaves. And she was the one who actually wanted to open my bag and look at it carefully. And she did take one by one, experiencing each world. Next toy called Emotion. This is what we plan to do at the hospital corridor, to change this corridor into a toy ground. And this is what happens. It is a movable toy you can combine and play in different ways. This boy carefully took one by one and then put it back one by one. And after that, he start putting the blocks in between the wall and the window into this small gap. These little things are lacking in these children and youth. This toy is called Wonder Box. It is just a cutout tree, branch, and walnut. But it is so simple that they start to wonder, what is this? What is this color? What is this texture? And all these differences through their senses. Further, it is important for children to play lively and emotional. How can we make them smile instantly? Was a big question we had for ourselves. So we designed this flower book stuffed with laughter. So, uh, my daughters are in there, my students are in there, they all made these funny faces. Why? Because these children don't have enough time to go out to meet these faces, meet these occasions. So it was put in this flower type uh, picture book type uh, open book and we stuffed these triangular pieces in there 
and allow children to look at it one by one. Some of the students who went were forced to make these faces in front of them. They were requested to make the funny face. Some girls were higher in uh, intelligence and uh, they start playing their own ways, many different ways. And this girl, the one that I was concerned for a long time, I wasn't sure if she can see, if she can react, but I tried to do it slowly. And when I brought it close to her fingers, she held one piece. And from there, I had confidence that maybe she can see or feel something. And this one is named after the Tudu Hospital, coined with Tudu. Because of the bag issue, where the children seem to lack stimulus, I put many things that they can do in one doll. Actually two, but uh, has a similar function. And there's a rubber band that they could, rubber rope that they could wrap around the buttons, zippers, uh, plastic buckles, bells. And this child whom had uh, a little bit of shake on her head. And uh, she was the one that I really didn't know if she reacted to the toy or not. But I left the toy with her for a while. And then sooner or later, she started to touch. She started to touch everywhere. And then when we tried to take the toy to another child, she really didn't want to let go. So again, this girl who has a higher uh, ability to enjoy, start doing everything that we planned for this toy. Some enjoyed the buckle, some enjoyed the book, uh, bricks. And this one is from the pen, click pen. I realized that when I click a pen, the pen inside is actually rotating. So we change that into a wood stick with paintings. And we try to uh, make a toy that is safer than the ballpoint pen. But everybody wants to click a pen. So this youth who has a very severe skin disease, he was always watching what everybody's doing, but too timid to join the crowd. He was so into this pen, he started to write, although it doesn't write, he started to write, he started to play, and then eventually he dismantled it. Another toy, which is uh, what we call the pom pom ball. It is a ball created by paper, but it's so light and it has a certain uh, hardness, many uh, different ages and disability uh, children youth can instantly enjoy this ball. And this youth in the middle he was first shy and didn't want to engage at all. And some of the students uh, tried to uh, flirt with him, do different kinds of things. Eventually he was in, and then everybody started to intermingle. And eventually the nurse who kept her talk with us minimal came up to us and said, for over 20 years I have worked here, it is my first time to have people like you. And she also told me that she actually thinks music therapy will be good for the children. And that is hopefully what she can do in the future. So simply, Joe Symbiotic Design in collaboration, these photos are the examples of how these beautiful people with one for smiles, and how they should be living. And these design projects and these design products brings reversion to what we meant to be. And this is a key to geosymbiotic humanity that I would like to advocate. And I'll go and brief the second one, which is an artwork project. It is uh, in the central uh, Vietnam, in Da Nang. I'll just go in brief. We created a tool for artwork, something interesting for them to play. And again, there are different levels of uh, children uh, and their abilities. So we use a pencil with a eraser in the back and let them use as uh, instead of the brushes. And these are the paintings that they brushed. And we heard that the center is operated by volunteers and is constantly lacking funds. So we decided to create another livelihood project 
creating t-shirts in collaboration with Dana University students. We even encountered a Vietnam veteran, AO victim himself, who is a volunteer supporting the children and the facilities. So I believe that collaboration and geosymbiosis with avocation-oriented projects are the key to geosymbiotic humanity. Let us continue our collaborative workshops and design projects towards the geosymbiotic ecosophical revitalization for humanity. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor Takashi. And uh, we collect a lot of questions, but all for you. And I will uh, speed the uh, question one by one. Uh, the first question, how would geosymbiosis compare with agroecology? How does it relate to the concept of Gaia? Uh, question uh, two, why do you think the problem of lasting consequence of Agent Orange is not taken up by the mainstream media? Apart from your efforts, do you know of important networks that focus on the issue of Agent Orange? Question number three, are there evidence of dioxin in current agricultural products? Uh, the last one, has Vietnam asked for compensation from USA has Vietnam got any compensation? The first question, uh, I know briefly about uh, Gaia and um, I understand the point uh, of the question. Um, the, I believe the difference is only in the way it's expressed. So actually the concept of geosymbiosis or Gaia or many others are nothing new, especially in the indigenous communities around the world. I sense and I experience many similar um, thoughts and uh, beliefs and practices that strengthen it. And I believe Jaipet uh, spoke about uh, Laotian practice as well. So, what I feel is that it is something that actually is in our blood so that we all have it. We just maybe forgotten it or maybe we educated ourselves not to look at it. So that would be my question to the first. And uh, second, um, there are many reports on Agent Orange and there are many uh, academic reports, uh, as I mentioned with some examples. But what's missing really is a true attention and actions toward the Agent Orange survivors themselves. And as Nishimura's report, as uh, uh, Chan Tuha's report mentioned, third generation Agent Orange victims are not getting enough support. So we have to really think about uh, not just in terms of Agent Orange, but in terms of humanity. How should we engage with each other to create this harmonic coexistence? And thirdly, about the uh, compensation to uh, Vietnam victims. Still, there were a lawsuit uh, very recently uh, by the victims. However, uh, the lawsuit uh, did not consider her uh, case to be a lawsuit case. And if you dig in a little bit in the history of the lawsuits of Agent Orange, first, the uh, Vietnam veterans, they had the lawsuit. And uh, I believe it was Monsanto who paid off large sums of cash uh, or money right away so that there will be no claims later. But the Vietnam Agent Orange victims, they tried to make a lawsuit which was uh, declined. So I believe from my knowledge uh, that there are no compensation made from the United States, uh, specifically for Agent Orange victims. Although they put money on some research and some uh, remediation projects, and this and that, but they do not admit to compensate the Agent Orange victims. That is the main key. And that is why we have to focus on the Agent Orange survivors more. That is my personal opinion. 
thank you very much for all presentations. And uh, we not only draw our attention to the uh, problem of Agent Orange, but also to reflect on the, uh, the consequence of war in different form. So uh, we have to uh, strip from the um, chemical agriculture to the ecological um, uh, mine and also ecological um, the societies. So uh, I think the uh, concept of geosymosis, uh, geosymbiosis, uh, geosym right? Uh, so it's very important. Uh, as uh, ta uh, Professor Takashi mentioned, it also uh, exists in different um, uh, kinds of uh, communities and particularly indigenous communities. So I think it's very important for us to revisit the history of uh, uh, indigenous communities and also the uh, sustain this uh, indigenous culture because uh, how can we uh, encounter the uh, Western modernization? Uh, because a war is also kind of the product of um, modern uh, modernization and also capitalism. So it's also uh, our mission uh, to um, fight against this kind of uh, colonization and also the modernization. So it's, um, we bring, uh, we have to um, complete our mission and to uh, nurture a new and also alternative world for our next generation. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm.